good. Right. No, this is a, an auspicious start to uh, my, my streaming career. Wonderful. Um, hi, everybody. I am Nathan Blades and or the Neon Caster. You may have seen me before on shows like uh, The Sprawl on the Shadowcasters Network, who are actually watching right now. Hi, hello. Um, with me, I have uh, two other people who uh, appear in some of the content I do. And this is also a good way to check that their audio comes through okay. Uh, so, first of all, we, we have Will. Howdy, howdy. That seems to be coming through on this side. Hopefully everybody heard that. Hi, Will. Tell us about yourself. Well, I am a journalist and tabletop RPG developer from East Coast US. And yeah, I'm here to have a good time, say some, say some words, and be a robot. Nice. Or not. <laughs> and uh, also on this uh, stream, we have the delightful Ray. Hi, Ray. Hey, Nathan, how's it going? I am good, thank you. I am uh, incredibly fucking nervous, but otherwise I'm um, Aw. Yeah. Aww, My you, webcam you, setup you, looks good. You've got this. It's, it's, I mean, there's not even any improv involved. So no, there is no improv you're gonna be involved fine. at all. It is, the nervousness is mostly technical issues, like the one we literally just had, but that's Completely fine. Completely fair. It seems that I cannot stream and record at the same time, or maybe I should start recording and then stream. Who knows? We'll find out next time. Uh, hopefully Twitch will actually record this, <clears> and then it won't be lost to the ether. So, <laughs> I, I have both So, uh, mm -hmm. go ahead. I, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and introduce myself. Uh, as Nathan said, I'm yes. Ray. Uh, I play Razmataz on the Talent Agency podcast, a member of the Phantom Arts Entertainment Shadowrunners. Um, I also am the project lead for a project called Voices at Play. Uh, if you enjoy the Talent Agency, then you will probably like what we do because we are a group of all marginalized people supporting, sponsoring, and generally promoting the work of marginalized tabletop RPG creators. Um, I also run my own podcast called Tales from the Dark Dragon's Inn. So you should check that out if you like D&D, I guess. Mm. Uh, Twitter, Voices At, for the Voices At Play, which again, come support us because we're doing really great stuff. And uh, the other one, I'm, I'm not active anywhere else right now. Voices at on Twitter. Go find nice. that. Nice. Actually, yeah, we'll go and give yourself the chance to go and plug your social networking contacts. <laughs> we'll do so at the end of the show as well. But, you know, just for the people who've tuned in now, they get to know where they can find you and follow you immediately. Yeah, that's a great idea. So anyone who likes the idea of tabletop RPGs about things like, oh, Mega Man Battle Network, where you got... Um, kids and superhero um, software working together or what if you played as terrible sonic the hedgehog original characters from the internet and saved the day or <laughs> as hamtaro characters and baked a piece of bread as the main piece of conflict then you can check out the games that i make by going to merrymancergames.com and there's there a website now oh gosh i didn't know yeah that. I'm legit, and that website looks terrible on mobile, so look at it on your desktop, please. <laughs> um, yeah, you can find a link to my games on DriveThruRPG mm -hmm. and a link to the Discord channel. We've got almost 600 people there, and we're doing all kinds of events and fun, cool stuff. Yeah, everybody's on their hustle today. We appreciate this as content creators. Uh, so, uh, yes, I have dragged you both and uh, various viewers watching on Twitch today to go and do a little thing I like to call Cyberpunk Book Club. Uh, I figured that my... Um, the way that I can uh, involve myself into Twitch content that's actually of some nebulous kind of value is instead of trying to play a game, like, well or quickly, like other people do, uh, to go and play games that have interesting narrative content and discuss them in context of wider media. And because I like cyberpunk a whole effing lot, um, I hope to, uh, with some kind of regularity, play a bunch of cyberpunk games for about three hours or so, uh, kind of go in discussing what kind of themes that we figure that they might have. And then as we play them, we kind of talk about that as we go. And then at the end of the stream, we go and have a bit of discussion about whether we had any interesting ideas about the realm of cyberpunk to take away or what cyberpunk means to that game in specific, because I'm sure both of you can uh, think of pieces of even just nebulously sci-fi media that have 
uh, conflicting ideas on what sci-fi is or what hacking is or what dystopian societies are i love the matrix (laughs) (laughs) oh yes uh uh, baby's first (laughs) transmedia i also appreciate it (laughs) but uh yes um today we are going to be covering uh 2064 read only memories which is a visual novel uh made by mid boss games um who are a a queer focused games developer um, this game is largely based on the video game Snatcher, uh, that was made in, like, the mid-80s by Hideo Kojima. Uh, but it's that, but, like, super gay, you know? Which already means that we're fully on board. <laughs> um, and from the, the kind of, like, description that we have here, uh, which hopefully everybody can see and read, uh, I can, I can make the font size of that larger if that is, uh, too small to see, but it should be okay. Uh, a journalist turned detective teams up with Turing, the world's first sapient machine, to unmask, cons- uh, to unmask a conspiracy that will shake the foundations of Neo San Francisco. Uh, so, uh, first of all, before we kind of get in too deep into the game itself, we're gonna have a little bit of chat about the kind of themes we expect or what we're kind of, like, looking for in this game is there anything for the two of you that you're hoping to kind of see in this game at all uh i Mm -hmm. have briefly played read only memories Mm -hmm. i say briefly because i have a terrible attention span when it comes to point and click style adventures fair um (laughs) i used to really uh, get into them but uh i think for me i'd like to sort of delve into the aspects of how it handles ai as a whole i'm hoping Mm -hmm. that it does that i would assume it does that but Mm -hmm. i guess we'll find out that's always been the aspects that have sort of fascinated me most is um the concept of self and Mm -hmm. you know the uh the concept of sentience i suppose uh Does that show up? Uh, hopefully that, that type yep. also appears mm-hmm. live. Yeah! Technology. <laughs> <laughs> I did a non-zero amount of work in advance of the stream. I'm very smug. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd i say for myself, I'm interested to see... Um, my knowledge of this game is very limited, mm-hmm. but judging by the fact that it's a journalist turned detective and one of the characters that was mentioned was... I said it was like kind of like a um, conservative um, news anchor or something like that. I'm interested to see how the to see the role of the media in mm-hmm. in judging personhood and just in general. Role of the media, let's say. Okay, cool. Um, I have also played a little bit of Read Only Memories previously, and um, one of the themes that it kind of runs with is the idea of genetic splicing is something that's available in the technology of this universe. Uh, But also, in addition to that, using that as a bit of a metaphor to talk about um, uh, kind of like human rights uh there's a there's a definite um kind of um metaphor for uh splicing your body in queerness um so which is interesting in a game that actually predominantly stars queer people so it's like that metaphor is layered on multiple times at once uh so we will have a little bit of like how does this game uh discuss queerness as metaphor Will this game handle things better than David Cage? Ha! Uh, real talk, real talk. Uh, I will absolutely do Detroit Become Human on the show as a Cyberpunk Book Club episode. Um, I'm gonna have to find a way. Where I, I can... would be down for that. Mm. Mm. Uh, I'm gonna have I'm, to find I've a way to kind of get that game it, cheaply because so um, <laughs> it's I am a not paying what that game costs new. I the... own it. I can loan you the disc. Oh, um, is it is it a uh, PS4? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to get myself a capture. We card. might have to do it very soon though, because I will like to keep the disc. And, uh, oh, oh September yes, that's true. You're deadline. moving. Um, no, that's 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 fine. That could be one of the one of the ones higher up on the docket. But Russian to the dunk house. 
Yeah, I mean, you know, uh, what kind of uh, punk media is this if we don't immediately, like, and aggressively dunk on people who aren't, uh, who are abusing the system, as it were? Uh, let, let's let's just politely call Detroit Become Human a light abuse of the system, and uh, and leave it at that for now. Anyway, <laughs> we have uh, some themes that we're going to expect. Uh, we have the premise of the show talked about. So let's go get this thing started, huh? Let's go boot the game and switch to the gameplay scene. Hopefully that actually shows up. Otherwise, that would be very miserable. Yeah, there we go. Also, the intro is actually pretty cool. I, um... We can sit through the narration of it, actually, because uh, what we've done here is that uh, the where we'll start in the game is not actually at the beginning. Um, we'll have uh, uh, it skipped a little way in the game, so we don't have to deal with like tutorial stuff, if that makes sense. So we can actually kind of get to the meat of some of the bits that the game is exploring. Um, so this will do once it actually goes into its opening cutscene. A pretty good job, uh, kind of explaining what this game is about. Also, we can listen to the sick title music. Uh, don't forget to screen share on Discord for us. Ah, yes, screen sharing on Discord is an important thing. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's go do that. Turn the screen share. Screen twenty sixty four. Is that Ooh, a thing that people can see? Video games. You bet. Yeah. And I'll leave. I'll be silent for the narration stuff because it's pretty good. Neo San Francisco, twenty sixty four A.D. The world thrives on a constant flow of groundbreaking technology. Cybernetic augmentation and genetic modification allow the repair and enhancement of almost any part of a human body. Millions of people jack into virtual worlds every day to work, play, and connect with one another with advanced brain-to-machine technology. Easier access to genetic modification leaves hybrids walking the streets, looking less human every day. However, some can't keep up with the fast-paced changes around them. They say that ROMs, now commonplace thanks to Parallax, are leading humans to a place where we can never come back, losing the survival skills that we have relied on for millennia. Relationship organizational managers are compiled with virtual intelligence and can seem human-like in their interactions. But despite the marketing hype, at their core, they are only brainless machines. Organizations like the Human Revolution seek to slow the relentless pace of progress, fearing that unchecked technology will make us lose the very things that make us human. High above the rising tension below, a parallax engineer has blurred the line even further. And with this, humanity's destiny will be altered. a video game premise okay uh, also I should have uh, fixed my mic and I should be at least in stereo now hopefully <laughs> right, let's get this started um, as I say I have uh, pre-saved uh, partly through the game so we'll be uh, continuing from part in the story but uh, there will be a degree of uh, explanation as we go. Right, let's remember where we are. We are going to Market Street. So, uh, what we have uh, been doing so far in the plotline, just very, very briefly, uh, this uh, delightful cat lady here, Jess, uh, she is a, um, I guess, meta-human rights activist, and uh, she uh, has tasked us to go and break up uh, humanity first protesters in the market area. So we're gonna go and show them what's what. Uh, also, we're gonna be doing voice acting of the characters as we go. This game has incredible voice acting, uh, but 
our voices are. So don't are mind us while we better. mess it up. <laughs> yes, <laughs> basically. <laughs> you can thank us later. There are the protesters. Hey, hey. I thought you turned those voices off. I did. Nice it try. didn't save. Great. Let's fix Fantastic. that. Fantastic. Well, we can hear what Turing sounds like, and then we're going to turn Turing's voice acting off. I have to admit that I still find the vandalism of Hayden's apartment puzzling. The protests themselves have been entirely peaceful so far. And the human revolution, regardless of the flimsy philosophical ground they stand on, are not a group known for projecting their ideology through unlawful means. Turing's a big nerd. The more I research them, the more I have to admit to the statistical conclusion that we're either dealing with a deceptive covert operation scenario, or less likely, a radical splinter group. Still, I doubt it will hurt to ask around. Brian Mulberry is there in the center. Who is Fair the Elvis said, guy we saw earlier. To talk to, and my mesh searches confirm that he is the leader of the local chapter of the Human Revolution Organization. Mesh searches is a really scene, hard sentence to say. Mm, so, from the video clips I've reviewed. so it's probably good that uh, we get to skip some of this info dump in terms Perhaps of reading it out loud. Yeah, for sure. I'm like, wow, Turing does talk a lot. Yeah, no, uh, Turing is uh, de a delightful NB bean, but also does not know where to shut up. Uh, cool. Just like me, except huh. without the non-binary. Right, no, hopefully, then, actually, we're gonna, we're just gonna make sure I'm gonna turn down the voice as well, just to, uh, entirely, uh, avoid. Remove all possibility uh -huh. of our coolness being ruined. Yes, okay, good, good. Right, uh, so this character is normally voiced by Jim Sterling, but I'm gonna voice <laughs> them instead. Yeah, so I'll be voicing Turing. Mm-hmm. And as and when any other additional characters we'll just generally discuss uh we'll probably frame it in a way where everybody gets to voice a person in the scene more or less that's what Sounds i think good aha uh -huh, here we go oh there's bleeping but that's fine we can navigate that hello there would you like to hear about the jane dangers of our country's unchecked use of genetic modification i have pamphlets here Take one. Great. Um, actually, uh, Will, do you want to kind of take the, the kind of narrator character? Sure, can do. Mm -hmm. Any any specific voice cues? Um, I have currently got them as he, him, but uh, otherwise okay. there's works. no other real defining characteristics. He's a journalist. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. I'm a journalist too. Yay! <laughs> okay. So... We'll let you choose Shut the options. Oh, okay. Wild. So wait, I'm choosing the option? Mm-hmm. Okay, let's see. Uh, let's, why don't we go with number two? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm writing a story on the protests. Can we speak on the record? Um, the press hasn't been so kind to us lately. They try to feign neutrality, but just look at the way we get covered. It's disgraceful. But no matter, I'll show good faith that you are after what all of us are here for after. The truth. We in the human revolution just want people to really think about the technology and bodily enhancements they use every day. And decide if they're actually better off. What questions can I answer for you? Uh, what are the ultimate goals of the human revolution? We hope to educate the public about the dangers of rapid technological advancements. We want to warn the country away from thoughtlessly accepting every scientific discovery we make before it's too late. We used to say that splitting the atom would surely bring about the end of humankind. But now we're changing the very things that make us human. Our biology with nothing to ensure our safety. The revolution we're after is humanity as a whole making the decision to remain as we were created and return to how we lived before genetic science put us on the wrong course. Ooh. Ooh. Mm. The world is Icarus, flying too close to the sun. 
It's only a matter of time before our arrogance becomes our demise. Slippery slow. <laughs> this game is nothing if not on the nose. Um, just because we can doesn't mean we should. How do you plan on enacting the social change you want? At our core, we're a peaceful movement and seek only to convince people to vote according to the truths we reveal to them. Which, that's a really specific word. <laughs> what about the <laughs> truths you don't reveal, asshole? <laughs> the human revolution has faith that American democracy will win out in the end. Uh, <laughs> it falls to us to make sure that people are informed about the daunting and confusing technologies they put in their senseless they put their senseless faith into every day. On a personal level, we would like to ex exhort every individual to try and live more simply and reject any gadget or medicine that would make us less than we are. And uh, why protest at this clinic? Genetic modification is one of the most dangerous sciences we have ever fooled around with. It's playing God on the highest order and threatens to unseat what humanity is all together. Cybernetics is a dangerous path as well, selling off pieces of ourselves bit by bit for mechanical strength and resilience. But at least a brain controlled android is still a human brain, even if a in a metal box. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, Brian is a lot. Um, there is a reason Congress enacted laws prohibiting highly modified hybrids from breeding, um, which Jess, the aforementioned uh, cat lady, um, her genetic therapy was to save uh, herself from an incredibly advanced cancer, and in managing to make sure that she can't die, uh, manages to modify herself beyond the established level uh, that hybrids are allowed to breed at. Um, which she took the, those people to court and won, and now she's a lawyer uh, defending other genetically modified people. So Jess is rad, um, but yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, I do not fault the individuals who come here for treatments, many of whom are disabled and deathly ill. If you ask me, genus isn't the kind of therapy they all need. However, we must take a stand against the medical research industry that would have us cast aside our humanity for their miracles. It's all you, Raz. Right. We have reports of a break-in at the home of Parallax Researcher with Human Revolution Graffiti at the... Do you have any comments? Ah, uh, well... The human revolution certainly does not condone such actions at all. We're a peaceful organization, and threatening people is not going to earn us hearts and minds. But, off the record, some of our younger members can be a bit overzealous, as any hot headed teenager tends to be. Millennials are killing peaceful processing! <laughs> I'll look into this matter personally, and if I discover that any of our younger members were involved, they'll be turned in to the proper authorities. Now, not to cut this too short, but I need to get back to my people. I hope I've answered all of your questions. You clearly missed doing real journalism. I'm impressed. My, my heart. <laughs> I think you're starting to get back into the hard-boiled investig investigative journalist thing, girls. Hopefully, we'll get lucky enough to turn up a new lead, even if this one didn't pan out like we'd hoped. Mm -hmm. What option would you like to go for? Hmm. What do you think about what he said? I think he should take a screwdriver and shove it up his- <laughs> <laughs> I think he was considerably less deluded than my searches on the meshnet had led me to believe. 
<laughs> oh, hmm, hmm. Oh, choices. Yeah, uh, it's tough because I don't. I don't think he's lying. I just think he's an asshole. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I think I think number two will be more interesting. I, I meant if he was telling the truth. Oh, well, he didn't appear to be lying. But I'm not equipped with interrogation sensors. You have more experience with this than I do. Do you think he was telling the truth, Caster? <laughs> hmm. You can be quite sassy as the main character. You can also be super rude to Turing. <laughs> Please don't. I, I would never hurt I love you. this little orb bean. Mm -hmm. I... Hmm. I do. Hmm. I'll continue observing you and try to discern how to read people as we question. A useful skill I find myself sorely lacking in. Lead on. <laughs> Don't forget, we're still here to actually break up these protests. Let's see if we can't figure out a solution together. Make sure to look around and think carefully. I'm sure we'll find something. The way that they sort of kind of layer in um, like game hints into the regular dialogue is variably dumb. I live for it. <laughs> Can, okay, important question. Can you tell me what this depressed ball is? Oh, uh, this little weather rom. Yeah, all the <laughs> okay. robots in this are called roms. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it is a. Interesting. A RSU climate control ROM, model 6703, if I'm not mistaken. Apparently, it is owned by the Hassi Bar, based on this identification mark. Oh, the bar behind us, neat. Um, but yeah. Why? Uh, we might just have to investigate that. Uh-huh. Uh, apparently there are two ways of doing this puzzle. There's the nice way, and then there's the starting a riot way. Um, <laughs> but I, I know the solution to the nice way, because I've played this far in my, in my run of it a couple of years ago. Uh, so we can, we can progress with that. But yeah, the, the bar is an interesting time. Mostly because it has one of my favorite characters in it. Um, this this lady, uh, <laughs> she's great. Uh, she is also anime trash, and I identify strongly. <laughs> she seems bored. Since there's a ROM that handles all the ordering, there's not too much for her to do right now. Actually, you should probably take the narration, the back description narration as well, though. But, uh, oh really? Yeah. I mean, it's I guess it's in the it's in the main character's voice or in their head, so. I suppose it makes sense that you take that, but... Uh, yeah, sure. I'll take her voice, though. Aww, that is the most adorable little ROM! What kind of model is it? Where did you get it? It's so moe! Ah, oh, uh, they're a custom model. <laughs> oh, wow! You don't see a whole lot of those around. Thanks, I work out. <laughs> <laughs> Must have taken ages to get the case looking that good with a home printer, too. I'm impressed. Anyway, what can I get you? Mm, a drink and maybe some information? A drink I can do. And I guess I have some time to talk. Also, I, I really like the music in this this little room. The music only plays here, but uh, I am a sucker for like shop themes in video games, and this is like a classic shop theme. The protesters outside of the clinic are driving off a lot of my regular customers. Filling up my bathroom too, jerks. So, what do you want to know? Is that your climate control ROM outside? It does a good job, huh? Yeah, that's mine. Well, 
technically it's the property of Hassie Holdings. We spent a mint on it, but the rest of the block helps pitch in for maintenance costs since they usually set it to patrol the whole area. You should check it out when we do Christmas in July. Although it's currently December, I believe. It can cover the whole street in snow, as long as it's cloudy enough to keep the sun off. Sort of like today. This information has been added to the court record. Mm-hmm. Would you mind if I take it for a spin? Sorry, but that thing cost me way too many credits just to let anyone poke at it. I would need to see some serious credentials before I let you mess with it. You know, enough to make sure you can afford to replace it if you break it. Wow, judging much. <laughs> Otherwise, no touching. Let's let's do the option that I should have chosen first. It, you called Turing Moe? Sorry, Otaku speak. It just means he's really cute and lovable, and you kind of want to hug him forever, you know? I I think there is a Ch Turing plush in existence. Um, I'm pretty sure you're right. Mm -hmm. If if they release like a Turing like a Nendoroid or like a amiibo sized thing, I would buy that in a heartbeat. A lot of Otaku come around here. Probably because I own the place. I use I'm used to being able to shoot my mouth off and not explain all the jargon. O Otaku as in Chinese cartoons? Ha! You're an Otaku. Your character too? is forty. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know it's a bit out of fashion, but I'm a history buff. Ooh. The past really gives context... Mmm. Mmm, that stinks. Uh, the past really gives context to stories of the present, you know what I mean? I've been to Tokyo twice already. Uh, the old otaku resists the new culture of the saishi in the same way their parents refused to give up cassette tapes. The saishi? Oh, sorry. The cyber shibito, the cyber dead. In the early 21st century, Japan had an epidemic of chronic shut-ins, and the rise of direct link virtual reality only made that worse. Suddenly, people weren't just refusing to leave their rooms, they were refusing to leave their heads. But as the technology got better, the Saishi were the first to figure out how to use their own brains to sculpt cyberspace. Computers are good at thinking in straight lines, but the human brain is capable of so much more. The best virtual landscapes, the most real VR dramas and games, are created by the Saishi. Now, even if an earthquake or a meteor or whatever leveled Japan, they'd still have Neo Tokyo built on the VR net. But enough babbling. How about you? <laughs> if you're interested, <laughs> I'm sure you can find more out on the mesh, or use an induction helmet to visit Neo Tokyo yourself. It's a trip, especially for newbies. So, uh, for, for what it's worth, we already have the items on us to be able to solve the weather run puzzle immediately. But if we want to continue talking to her, we can. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm tempted to ask her a bit about herself, but if you want to keep things moving along, that's fine too. I really like her as a character, so I'm entirely fine. Tell me a bit about yourself. Oh, I never introduced myself, did I? I'm Ramona. I guess there isn't much to tell. I went to college, got a degree, took out a loan and bought this place. Now I spend my days trying to find enough time and money to sustain my VR drama addiction. The mood. My priorities are justice, cute stuff, and magical girls, in that order. Big mood. <laughs> What else? Um, I pretty don't much leave the store. You don't seem pleased about the human revolution. 
Also, apologies for the lawnmower outside. It's summer. It has to happen. Oh, uh, happy belated summer solstice to all my witch friends out there, by the way. Um, they, look, they've got the right to protest, but I don't have to like it. Once they're done with the hybrids, I know they'll be coming for me next. So I'll be voting appropriately. Remember to vote, kids. And if I have to unclog one more toilet because of their entitled, bigoted, jerk face, I will lose my goddamn mind. Why would they come after you? Oh, you can't tell? I've got the cybernetic arm and leg, thanks to an auto cab crash when I was a kid. I also got neural links from VR interfacing. If it was up to those dinosaurs, I'd be stuck in a wheelchair right now. Or worse, depending on how far back they want to push our medical technology. It's already illegal for me to have a rocket-powered fist. What more do they want? <laughs> <laughs> Digitelli says, I am your local sword lesbian, and yes, I, I support all my local sword lesbians. As a fence to myself, I have deep respect. So that is indeed everything. I think that's everything. Okay, enjoy your drink, and let me know if you need anything else. So, uh, we have a very rudimentary inventory system in this game. And we have a taser pistol. <laughs> A business card and a brochure for the Human Revolution. Uh, the business card is uh, from a very um, well-known research doctor, Yannick Fairlight. Um, Dr. Yannick Fairlight? I've heard of him. Super rich guy, used to own System 1. Why are you giving me his card? I work for him. He's looking to buy a climate control ROM like yours. Yes, and I'm detecting lies. <laughs> He's getting on in years. They would be useful for when he goes out and about. So interesting that this robot can lie. Yeah, I was just thinking that. That's why we wanted to see it before. I need a close look at it. Make sure it'll suit his purposes. This is my lying voice. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay. I guess you can take a peek. Don't bust it, though. And I've scanned this card, and I swear if you break my ROM, I'll be calling your boss. Here's the RFID key to access it. Thank you! This will surely be useful for our needs. What a winning smile. Shall we go check it out? Doot do. do, do. There's incidental dialogue, but who cares? We have plot to do. Oh. Also, there's a scenario following this that is what I kind of want to get the gist of in this in this session. So we'll be doing that. Use an item. Do I have the... Oh no, it's not the ID card. That's just a... Use the ROM. Hmm. This ROM has multiple different climate control settings. could make things a little more festive. Christmas is my favorite season. Oh my god, what a bean. <laughs> I mean, Halloween or nothing, but... Should I switch it to snow mode? Yeah, turn this baby on. <laughs> oh, the most basic pixel effect. <laughs> <laughs> it's snowing? Okay, people, I for one didn't bring any winter wear. Let's call it a day for now. Snow mode deactivated. So, one of the ways that you can solve this problem is that you can find a brick in the street and throw it at the police rom. Oh, yikes. Excellent work, Caster. While I still have doubts about the moral superiority of using subterfuge to disperse a protest, we at least accomplished our goal peacefully. And to be frank, 
considering how the human revolution is clearly working against my personal interests, I won't waste many clock cycles puzzling that ethical quandary out. Fuck him. Hmm. Might I draw your attention to these youths over your- Those youths, he says, aging 50 years. <laughs> youths. <laughs> Counterculture clothing, obvious bad attitudes, and graffiti paraphernalia. Mm. Those could be our suspects who damaged my home in the name of revolution. Maybe. <laughs> <I'm> just... <laughs> Damn. You can Is be that a so request? So mean to Turing. You don't have to be mean to Turing. I, 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 I couldn't. I couldn't hurt him on the first playthrough. Uh, maybe. Let's talk to them. Right. We should approach them Let's fuck cautiously, them. as to not start a confrontation with the wrong individual. Turing, you fucking nerd. <laughs> they even point us to the true culprits. They could just be random bystanders, but... Oh no! They've noticed our attentions! <laughs> Come along! Maybe we can catch them! Ooh, ooh. We'll never catch them on foot. <laughs> Hold on! I'm... Hold on! I'm calling for an autocab of our own. I know it seems a great deal of trouble for such a tenuous lead, but I have a hunch about them. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. Hmm. Nerd. Arrgh! The autocab is estimated to take five minutes to arrive. Well. We'll never be able to engage in pursuit fast enough to catch up to them. Perhaps we should call Tomcat? Tomcat's great. I like a lot of characters in this game, actually. Maybe they can do some bit of techno wizardry and stop that cab. Yeah, good idea, bring them up. Excellent. Hold on while well, I connect it. Beep boop. So who wants I was to take Tomcat? Uh, I, I'll happily take Tomcat, but I feel like that's going to result in me talking to myself. I'll switch to, to Turing. I'll switch to Turing instead, that's fine. Okay, cool. Howdy, folks. How's the search for the data cache going? Actually, that's what we're calling about, Tomcat. We may have located the perpetrators, but they eluded us and are making their escape in an auto cab. We attempted to use a cab of our own to tail them, but it hasn't arrived, and they're getting away. Oh, can you hack the cab and stop it? Oh, no can do, little guy. Security on those cabs is tight, and the dang thing will shut its the dang thing will shut down its external net connection long before I get it. Unless. Ooh, I have an idea. Sit tight for just a sec. Keyboard Tippy tap, type in. Tack, 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 tack. All right. That went faster than spit on a skip. Yeah, you can tell that Texan. I did a job a few years back and had to break into the city's central traffic network. Do me a favor and don't ask why. Hmm. <laughs> The back door I drilled into that long ago is still wide open. I'm logging into the traffic management system now. Wait. Aw, oh, shit. They may not have fixed that back door, but they did install a new counter intrusion VI. Aw, oh, the damn thing is hot on my tail. Virtual intelligence. I will save you asking that question. Uh, what can we do? Thank you for not insulting my accent. Mm -hmm. I gotta take care of this VI. I'm gonna need the two of you to handle the traffic system. Turing, I'm passing control to you. 
hold tight. I'm gonna be doing some two sets of hands on one keyboard kind of hacking. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Just push on the map. I'm loading up to Turing's face. Sorry, Turing. Now, I did manage to solve this puzzle first try when I did this last time. Let's see if I even remember how I did it. They're on the move. Here's how it works. Use your display map to keep track of their cab. Redirect it back to you. You can trigger traffic nodes at intersections so the cab thinks the streets are blocked off. Do it right and you should be able to steer them right back to you. You just gotta make sure to stop them where you're at or else they'll just go running off on foot. I'll put a goal marker on the map for you. Goal. You can trigger any node on the map at any time, so plan ahead. I'd say you'll have time for two moves every time they hit an intersection. If they go off the map, though, you'll lose them. Block every road that leads out of your grid and watch the places with three exit you can't, co <laughs> you can't all cover in one go round. Just hurry. I don't know how long I'm going to be able to keep this VI from messing on the carpet. Once I kill the connection, this little trick is over. I'll tap into the cab control node they're currently arriving at. Our top priority is to ensure they cannot leave the area Tomcat's given us access to. I'll mark the southern exit as closed first. We only have to... No. We only have time to block off two routes before the autocab will make a decision and move. We shouldn't block the route back here. We have to stop them where we can catch them. Once you get them back here, press the big button on top of the map to short wire the autocab. Be careful. If you stop their ride anywhere else, they'll just run off. What do you think the next move should be? Ah, okay. If we scoop around that way, I won't have time to block off any of that section there, I think. So it's kind of forcing them to move around that side. Yeah, let's block them to the north. Mm -hmm. Okay. Turin, I can't have you talking. It's messing with the signal. So I now have to solve it by myself. It's up to you now, Caster. Don't let those punks escape, and don't trap them anywhere that's not here. We can access the con we can access any of the control nodes in the area at any time. Plan ahead, and we should be able to get them. Got it? Right. Okay. So we want to. Mm -hmm. I know that I want to block off this. Probably the one behind them, I imagine. I don't think they can, because the, the car they can't is move linearly, backwards. it can't go backwards. Gotcha. So uh, I can now... Uh, well, we want it to go we, north, right? And then... Did, did he say you could block them off in advance? Like, you could go to a different one? Yeah, and... I think so. So I want to start passively blocking off some of the exits on this, because I don't yeah. care where they go. So I exactly. go here and block off that exit. Ha ha ha! Cool. Uh, I didn't realize they stayed blocked. That's... Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so you can do two on this time. So, so wanna... I want to block this one, because if they go no, north... No, 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 no. Oh, hold on. It, if they go north, you can stop them. I can block can this one them. for their escape in advance. Right. So... You, you need to block two of the upcoming ones, I think. Mm -hmm. So if I do this, I can block them from going north no. that way in advance. And then the one... And then I can uh, block this one to prevent it from going this way. Mm. Wait, how do they... Interesting. Yeah, I don't think that. Huh. I th I I was under the impression it was too. Oh, did I? Uh... Oh wait, unblocked that. Oh no, I've probably already screwed it up. That's fine. <laughs> I'm confused now. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, wait. Can... Hold on. Can you just block it on the east side from where they are? Oh, that's true. 
I have no idea what the game's logic is right now. Yeah, I assumed <laughs> that it wouldn't be able to go through a pit that's already blocked off. But yeah. hopefully this means that it's going to try and go this way and I can block off the end. Yeah. And you can oh, just hit this. that was very easy. Yep. Stop hmm. taxi. <laughs> that was way easier than I was expecting. <laughs> okay, fine. I'm gonna go stop them, and then we can interrogate the miscreants. <laughs> One on the right. Oh my god. What the hell do you want? Thank you. <coughs> Who do you think you're messing with, huh? You ain't got nothing on us, and if you don't get out of my way, I'll mess you up. Yeah. Hey, what do you think we should do? I guess you're the main character now, Nathan. That's fine. <laughs> we, we haven't <laughs> observed them doing anything illegal, and we could potentially make this go over smoothly. Or we could share news of this encounter with Lexi before things get out of hand. The, the, these two seem agitated already, and it, it may be best to make sure they're handled by the appropriate authority. Oh, Turing, do you not realize? A cab. <laughs> Those are the options I deduced. Questions or cops? So, one option. It's up to you. How do you want to do this? It'd be smart to grill them and see what they know. We just have a few questions for you, sirs, if you'd be so kind as to give us a few minutes of your time. Turing. Do you... Oh, oh. He interrupted himself, it didn't click. <laughs> Maybe we should just... Oh, actually, I'll let someone else voice him. Oh, I'll take another spot. Maybe we should just answer their questions. I, I mean, we didn't do anything wrong, right? Uh... Right, we ain't got nothing to hide. <laughs> so, um, hmm, hmm. Sh shall I take main character and Turing if you two are <laughs> doing the punks? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'm happy to uh to take yeah. your uh, decision. What's in the was. bag? What's in the bag? You a cop? Because if you ain't, we ain't got nothing in the bag. Yeah. <laughs> What's the spray paint for? We're newbie street artists. Um. These are the tools of our trade. These are all above board and legal. Fix your glasses, man. <laughs> Jesus. We just got done making a piece for our client. That's right. We're artists. Yeah. Why'd you run? Running? Who was I running from? You call me a coward? <laughs> uh, I, I don't think that's what they were insinuating. Uh, right. We just got places to get to and gotta go fast. You're holding us up. This is ridiculous. Enough! Stop assuming you can misdirect us with blustery words and feigned ignorance. Huh. I have matched the hues of those paints and the patterns of the bottom of your shoes with 95% accuracy to the scene of Hayden Weber's apartment. Ooh. Now tell us what you were doing there and why you stole Hayden's data cache. Now you're accusing us of stealing? Why are you on a... Oh, of course his name is Chad. <laughs> <laughs> Chad, they think they're on to us. Maybe we should just answer their questions so they don't go to the cops? Also, I love this little orb playing hardball. <laughs> I'm going to fuck you up. Damn it, Oliver. I told you I'm Starfucker now. <laughs> <laughs> I really want... I, I hate, like... Turing has to have the dial dialogue to say Starfucker now. He has to. Yeah, please. please they have to. Turing, please, please call them Starfucker. I 
only went along with this because you said we were going to a movie afterwards. Oh, he's mad. He just wanted a date. I don't even care about this human revolution stuff. Just, just because you're dead. Don't talk about my dad. Fine, whatever. We'll answer your friggin' questions. Ah, uh, Starfucker, never change. I don't. <laughs> Do you know anything about Hadlin's kidnap? I don't know what this protagonist voice is, by the way. I haven't nailed it down yet, eh, sorry. It can be a different voice every time, to be honest. They're very nebulous. I, I tend to have them relatively gruff, because they're a hard-world <laughs> investigative journalist. But, uh, See, that would be very easy to stay consistent with. I was just sort of trying to slip into the tone of Will's protagonist. But anyway. Ah, it's all good. Nervous guy. K kidnapped? He's been kidnapped? Shit, we ain't got nothing to do with that. We just sliced the door control and trashed the place. Wasn't nobody there. Why tag Hayden's apartment? There we go. <clears throat> oh, oh, man. oh, man. No big reason. I I am pretty neutral in pixel art in video games. I love that but face. I really like the animation that they do to the face <laughs> yeah. work in this game. It's really nice. I mean, he's a big hotshot researcher at Parallax, right? We heard a rumor his place was empty. Who's gonna pass up a sweet turret like that? We don't need any more of this tech shit, like your lippy rom over there. <laughs> Why did you take the data cache? I told you we didn't steal nothing. Quiet, Chad. I don't want to go to Juvie. Oh, they're babies. Here. Yeah. You can have it. Hey! Thanks for nothing, Starfucker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, thanks for giving it back. <laughs> uh, uh, Maybe you should. I, I wouldn't call them good kids. <laughs> no, he's good. No, Maybe they're good kids. Vandalizing people's hope. <laughs> I supersede, I have control. Yeah, whatever. Just get out of my way. We hope you find that Hayden guy. We're real sorry. We weren't trying to hurt anyone. Starfucker. Oh, right. Sorry. All right. Let's go catch that movie. Great. Um, can we get dinner first? Sure. Whatever you want. They are absolutely dating. I keep on getting distracted by the weather orb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Fair. I was making it snow again. Oh no. Ah, uh, that's, with, uh, party that's not right. Oh, uh, hi, Pixie. Um, Pixie is one of my uh, bestest buddy IRL friends from London. Uh, she's been streaming vid games for ages, so uh, it's neat that she's supporting my streaming quote unquote career. Hi, hello. Um, <laughs> Hello, <thank> Pixie. <laughs> it's lovely of you, for you, for, for, for you to have uh, joined us with your friends. Hello. <laughs> oh. I'm certain I deactivated snow mode. Oh. Incoming call from Tomcat. <laughs> Switcheroo. Yep, yeah, and I switched to Turing. <laughs> Hey, folks. Also, the reason there's a delay is your stream, uh, Ooh, is my stream sharing is, is... Yeah, you might try changing the server location again. Okay. Give me uh, just a second while I go and sort that out. Uh, you'll have to disconnect, right? So... Oh, true. No, no. If, if you no. reconnect, if you're going to change the server location, we'll all have to drop out of call and then jump back in. Okay. No, it, it automatically does it. Really? We'll, 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 yeah. we'll see. All right. All we'll, right. We'll, we'll try and do the thing. We're all learning here. Just Save changes. Let's there see if that is any better for anybody. Yeah. It's way better. It's moving. Yep. Cool. Um, oh, 
Jess just called me and told me she had access to the access node. I think that's what it said, something like that. She'll get you inside and I'll walk you through the connect in me so I can uh, access the parallax port, parallax network even. That should uh, help out. Did you get the data cache? Yes, um, those punks happen to have it. Oh, great. We don't have time to worry about it right now, though. Go to Stardust and drop it off with Majid for me, okay? He'll hold it. Uh, he'll hold it past me on. The, he'll hold it to pass on to me one second. I managed to trigger an alert within Parallax's network security, and they're gonna be moving their logs from one server to another. I need y'all in place at that access node before they do. No time for lollygagging. And I think Turin actually has a very posh voice considering how they speak. <laughs> no problem, Tomcat. We'll make our way there directly after we return to Stardust. We can worry about the weather ROM's malfunction later. Let's go. Our mission for Jess is done. <laughs> and the, the girl in the Hassie bar, I guess, is just going to have to handle it snowing all the time now. Rip. <laughs> Also, uh, I very much enjoy this vaporwave as fuck, like cyan and uh, purple. <laughs> yeah. Man. Totally expecting a Greco Roman bus to drift by mm -hmm, in the background. Mm -hmm. uh, let's go into Stardust, which is in uh, the Castro. Welcome to Stardust. That's Majid. There is Majid. Hmm. We should leave this data cache with him first, like Tomcat asked. Uh, should I take the night rider now? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Right. We'll also stare at Majid because what a hunk. It's Majid, the gruff-looking man who holds down the bar. And then there's also uh, their partner Gus. It's oh, Gus, Gus the other bartender for Stardust. He's a big bearish type with a hairy chest and an oafish laugh. What a bunch of lads! <laughs> he wants to take Majid. I can I'll take Majid, actually. I've got her. Oh, yeah, no, no, go ahead. Hey, good to see you back. What can I do for you? Here, Tomcat asked me to drop this off with you. Oh, right. Tomcat asked me to take that off your hands and pass it on to them later. Thanks for getting it to me. I won't pester you about what it is. I know things are always very hush-hush with Tomcat. I'll make sure they get it later today. I like the idea that everyone's literally saying his name in caps lock. Yeah. Excellent. Tom Thank you. Neat. Uh, I forget what else we need to do here. I think it's just pestering Jess. Uh, I think, yeah, we need to talk to the random hybrids. Mm -hmm. You again, alright, let you in. He doesn't need any voice acting, you're an incidental NPC. Jess, on the other hand, is important, and Ali's favorite character, who is in the chat. Hi, Ali. Uh, who's taking Jess? I'll take Jess. Sure. Hey, I heard from my friends down the street that the protesters are gone. Must have been you, huh? Oh, uh, Jess is like a massive hard ass, by the by, but we can still go with that. That's fine. On. Yeah, fine. <laughs> she can be fierce and feisty. That's totally all right. All right, then. I'm willing to give you the benefit of the doubt and return the favor. Tomcat said that if you got to an old abandoned access node, you might be able to find out what happened to hate. <laughs> I called up a buddy who's on night shift for Parallax tonight. He can buzz you in. But if anything happens, you broke in. This puts us about even. Don't think about drawing any more debits for a while. Good luck. Keep me out of your shit. Loving the flipping sprite dancing on the other oh, side gosh. of the table. Yeah, yeah, it's so good. Uh, especially since uh, at this range, the faces are uh, not great. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It is stylistically a thing about the game I unfortunately don't like. I kind of wish they redid the faces because what? what is that? 
Are those eyes and the nose? Is that a tiny dot mouth? I don't. But anyway, uh, let's get out of here and do some. There's another character who actually has very good dance animation, but they're not in here. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Let's go to this new spooky location. And also, probably safe. Just, just volunteering it uh, for a game to stream in future Monster Prom. Oh yeah, Monster Prom's great. Um, in addition to doing uh, Cyberpunk Book Club, I also want to do Urban Fantasy Book Club, so I can do. Oh yeah, I suppose like... it does. That's fair. Oh yeah, yeah. I will so it goes, still be there for Monster the, Prom. The realm. Also, Monster Prom's just fucking great. It's a good game. Oh, uh, there's a game on sale on Steam right now that would fit perfectly. Mm -hmm. um, I don't remember the name of it, but I will let you know, and you probably already have it. Is it by any chance Hypnospace Outlaw? No. Uh, it's a... Oh, I'll, I'll let you know. Okay. This is the place Tomcat said we should head to. Unassuming and quiet. I'll be honest. I don't think I would be in this section of the city without Jess. Without Jess giving us the all clear. Crime statistics are quite alarming, so let's uh, let us get done with our errand here and move on to safer ground. Hmm. Uh, do you want to still take the narrator, Will? Uh, hmm. I'll let you take the narrator. I have a feeling we're going to be getting some side characters that I'll be able to hop into pretty yeah. easily. Yeah. Uh, don't worry about it. No, this is just about him. <laughs> All of these are mean. <laughs> Uh, actually, I'm going to be mean for a change because Turing's being a fucking dork. Good to see a self preservation routine's working over time. I am no coward! I resent the accusation! After all, I didn't see you arguing against doing that favour for Jess in the first place. But I don't feel like debating the merits of being prudent with you. Tomcat is waiting for us. Maybe we can wrap up this whole investigation up once. Maybe we can wrap this whole investigation up once and for all. He says in the they say in the second hour of the game. <laughs> the game is short. You're a meanie McMean face. Yeah, no, I'm an asshole. Uh, the conversation on the uh, graffiti is actually pretty interesting. You know, right after we found Hayden's apartment in such disarray. I started looking into graffiti and street art more thoroughly. I have never much considered doing any of it myself, but it seems like an interesting avenue to pursue once I moved beyond abstract expressionism. You... you paint? Of course I do, though in a more traditional style than most street art. The simpler tags. Visual shoutings of identity and existence. They exhibit a feeling I can sympathize with, but it's these larger pieces, riots of color and chaos, that really interest me. Petty vandalism is beneath me, but there are other avenues for the practice. For example, did you know that Los Angeles, in the mid-2030s, legalized the tagging of mural-style street art on any building without requiring permission from the owner or city? That's an interesting thing for them to do. That's neat, though. I think um, Rio de Janeiro does that. Hmm. It was chaos of the highest degree for a while, but now the place is truly <laughs> remarkable. Perhaps I will visit, once this is all done with. Mm -hmm. That graffiti is actually the symbol of gonzo journalism. Ah! I hadn't even noticed. Do you have much experience with gonzo journalism yourself? Reporting after or during direct particip participation? If you do end up writing on this experience, Whatever you produce would be the very definition of it. You're too close to be objective now, and you're a key subject in this event. It doesn't seem to be your usual style, 
but you couldn't go another route at this point, and you're in the clear as if, and you're in the clear as you didn't instigate the situation. Hmm. I've never had much interest in the practice, but spending so much time around you has taught me to look at events in a different light. Perhaps only because I can verify your personal experiences as fact. Sorry, I'm rambling again, aren't I? I feel that. <laughs> and we're on a schedule. I, I don't even want to think about this. What if we don't find Hayden? What if we do? My memory processes sh my memory processes are shot from the stress of the past day. It's already taken a toll on me. But never mind. Let's find that access node. Let's find Hayden. <laughs> yeah, I uh, when I played through this game the first time around, I found that a very interesting conversation. Um, the con the concept of artificial intelligence being able to make art is uh, something that personally I'm very invested in. But then, mm -hmm. if you've seen uh, literally any of the work that I produce. <laughs> that would be pretty common knowledge. Um, so yeah, no, I like the fact that Turing paints and has opinions about graffiti. That's fucking cool. Oh, in fact, actually, now that I look at it, it actually says G O N Z O. Oh, huh. In 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 the artwork. Good so point. Like, huh. Neat. Right. Let's get into the room. Oh, whoops, my bad. Don't! The access node is next door to this building. That's the wrong place. You sure showed me, nerd. There we go. It actually says access node. I'm smart. <laughs> Video games. Human futility. <laughs> oh, uh, Parallax Block, AN19 oh, Security. Yeah, Hello? You can take it, Will. Yes, can I help you? Uh, Have fun. <laughs> I, I don't know what that's referencing, but hey. Um, this is Parallax Technician 329B, here for routine inspection. This late at night. Uh huh. Kids. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. That's just. I'm. I'm also gonna say saving here seems like a, a sensible thing. Good call. To I do. also totally didn't realize that this was like human security at first. So no, I, was like, I assumed, okay, I I assumed it was robot security too. It's fine. Okay. <laughs> Whilst you're saving, uh, I did put it in the chat. But for anyone else who's interested, the game I was referring to previously was Heaven Will Be Mine. Ooh. Uh, I don't think I have that. So. It's basically uh about being a mech pilot in the middle of a bloody war that is end of the world tier and it's also about kissing other mech pilots and it's super queer and oh, yeah. yeah that sounds like and also it comes you. heavily recommended by austin walker so okay well yeah 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 no he's, he's, he's <laughs> so that's how i found out about he's, it he's very he's very much across this kind of thing so i, I yeah definitely trust his judgment Okay. He de he definitely does the mechs mm -hmm. good and likes them. So, I am um, actually uh, me mech stuff is actually somewhat out of my wheelhouse. Uh, but Same I'm, uh, for the for the uh, for a lot, but I, I like a lot of mechy games. Mm -hmm. uh, I did listen to a little bit of Counterweight while we're on the uh, on the save screen and can. I love Counterweight. It. It's uh, I, I once you get past the initial slowness of it, whilst they're figuring things out, it, that that whole arc gets real deep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I definitely want to like. They're super engaging, but those first episodes, like any like any podcast, uh, the first set of episodes, especially audio wise, are uh, mm -hmm, for sure. Yeah, but I do definitely want to go to that. Do you mind giving the name of it one more time? Heaven will be mine. Okay. I've written it in the chat on Discord. Yes, but I want to currently to eight pound fifty four on Ooh. Steam. Ooh, yeah. No, the other day uh, I got an email saying, hey. All the Deus Ex games are literally under a pound, and I was like, oh, "Hi! Wow. Literally every game on your wish list is on sale." God mm -hmm. damn it! No, I, I tend to be pretty good about that kind of thing, but since I obviously need to get stuff to 
uh, fill out the list of things we're going to be playing for this show, assuming that the show isn't a terrible idea and I should stop mm. it right now. Um, being able to kind of buy those games while they're cheap. Or you could buy them for, sure, for, for me sure, if sure. you want a game definitely played on the channel. But uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's a thing. Anyway, let's continue to vid game. Right, uh, how do we get into the thing? Let's see. I'm looking forward to access now. This is the door to the access node that Tom Cat told us about. We need to use the buzzers to get inside. Oh, wait, no, we can just say that Jess sent us because they know that we're coming. We're smart. The guard isn't actually here. Oh, right, you yes. need to press the buzzer on the door. Uh huh. <laughs> Friends of Jess. There we go. I was wondering when you'd get there. You're at the access node on Cesar Chavez and Indiana, right? <clears throat> That's right! Ah, yeah. uh, good. Be quick. Don't touch anything. Got it? This conversation never happened, and you're on your own if you get caught out there. <laughs> Hope you find what you're looking for. This is it. Let's go inside, and I'll call Tomcat. This Gosh is... darn it, we're gonna have to switch again up! Oh. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> this place doesn't look like it's had any maintenance in years. Also, this is a mini game coming up that's relatively simple. <laughs> I hope the systems are still functional. Oh, I, I forgot you can't see in darkness. Um, maybe that switch over there adjusts to lighting? You mean this one? Ooh, it's a room. They could really use some cable tidies around here. <laughs> Not in the dystopian cyberpunk future of 2064, my friend. Oh, uh, Tomcat is pinging us. Forwarding video and audio. Howdy. Y'all at the access node? <laughs> I like that the bleeps also get a vocal, get like a filter when it's at range. I'm set to slice in once Turing makes physical exit. Of course, Tom. Of course, Tomcat. Uh, just walk me through how to connect myself, and I'll give you the necessary system permissions to use me as an interface. Ooh, uh... Just patch yourself into the links terminal down there, and I should be able to get started. That's definitely continuing that line of innuendo. Uh huh. Connecting wirelessly to it now. Permissions granted. Please be careful in there. Don't worry, doll. I'm an old hand at this. You won't notice a thing. Oh, uh, hi once again, Shadowcasters. Uh, we... One sec. What, ha what have we done? Um, we, um, cornered some edgy teens. Uh, we covered some bigots and snow. Uh, we talked about art with a robot for a while. And now we're hacking into the mainframes like this is, uh, Akira. Oh, shoot. Y'all have a bit more to do before I can get the info we need. This system's still running on old cassettes, and the recall slot's empty. I uh, can't call up Hayden's info file without it. There should be a cassette on the opposite side of the wall we can overwrite with the recall program. Pretty sure all that one was used for was phone monitor monitoring. You know, from back when phone networks were separate from data networks. <laughs> Remember the times. <laughs> <laughs> I swear, y'all, I just turned 22. Oh. <laughs> oh Anyways. I've aged 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> we need to move that cassette across the room to, uh, to access the record. Figure out how to do that and hit me back up when you've when you done it. Uh, so let's see, I used the links terminal to do the thing, and then I put a whole bunch of controls in. Uh, logging into links server z77.gamma. Welcome to links. Uh, I think you mean Linux. <laughs> uh, I, I can't remember the order. I, operating the data transfer arm is a thing I need to do to pull these cards out. 
but I forget any of these are important, so let's read them first. Ooh, never mind. Ooh. Stay using the biometric reader. I would say maintenance log, probably. Oh, my. Oh. Mm. Let's see. Uh, let's see what these say. Random graphs and diagrams are being tracked. Cool. Yeah. Thank How you. about the big red exclamation mark sign on the right? Uh huh. Nodes checklist. Oh, there we go. That could be handy. To check to make sure that everything is running okay. And that's it. <laughs> Fantastic! Good! Cool. This sign warns that this area contains high voltage. Let's not touch the Coming wires. at you from memory's side. Let's not touch the hanging wires either. That seems like a bad idea. Uh, I will at least look at these. This would be the cassette kind of what I was talking about. Okay. Ah, so I just need to move move those across. That's fine. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep. Operator transfer arm. Uh, retract arm. Oh, it'll, let, it'll actually let me do that. That's nice. This is the most complicated puzzle. Beep boop, beep. Boop boop boop. boop. Uh, okay, it already also grabbed it. That's fine. Oh man, I love the sound look effects. at this problem solving. I could be a like crystal I... maze like right now. The fact I that you've done it the... without the teamwork is just... No. Mm -hmm. Nice Didn't job. Even need us. I'm gonna put some more pressure on them to remove the data now. We'll see if we can't slip it right out of this network trunk. <laughs> Thanks, Tomcat. <laughs> Slurp. You would have thought that someone would have noticed and decommissioned this access node when the neighborhood went to hell, but... This mouse is happy to play while the cat is away. Mm. Uh, is, do, you, do you want to take this well to ask for questions? Yeah, sure. Why is this place usable for us anyway? Way back when I was a youngin', when I first hacked into Parallax's network, I mostly did it to make a point, yeah? They were just about to launch the MeshNet system, and I wanted to show the whole darn world that their security have more holes in it than Swiss cheese. Well, of course, I wasn't too shy about poking in a few more holes in my own devising while I was there. After putting in some more tricky software backdoors, I went ahead and deleted this access node off the maintenance schedule. <laughs> Then I reassigned the guy who was supposed to keep an eye on it to a different location. They were in the process of buying out the whole gaggle of these nodes in preparation to set up a private network for themselves. All just to use for the mesh net launch. Maybe a little too confident of them. Most of the software holes have been patched out as they upgraded their network, but this old place is just as forgotten as I left it. Why would they move the data? I've been targeting one of their data centers with a botnet driven DDoS attack, hitting every port into its network that I. Hmm. I ain't likely to do much, but tossing a few attempts to crack the firewall and their VIs are shit and bricks. Hmm. It's standard procedure for them to move their sensitive data to a different data center in case the attacker actually gets in. Make enough noise and it'll scare them enough and they're taking some defensive action, which is where we want them. Files are more vulnerable in transit. Okay. You got Let's it, know what you're <laughs> Now y'all just hold tight. I'll be done with this hick clickety split. <laughs> I find it quite interesting that Tomcat is a... Uh very willing to just do all the technical jargon in the dialogue and not necessarily explain it in like simplified detail that feels that's all 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 sci-fi hackers right i'm I just mean... doing the hacking thing with the, the wires and the codes and stuff mm -hmm. hmm, surveillance camera footage Ooh. oh my oh god 
Oh, Turing. Little buddy. I'm so sorry. What? What is it, Tomcat? What did you find? He's... He's gone, Turing. Of course he's gone, Tomcat. That's why we're here. Shit. Uh, I mean, he's gone, gone. Hayden... Hayden is dead. Uh, um... Uh, well, that obviously isn't right, Tomcat. Why, why would they kill him? Can you send me the relevant files? You must have missed something. Uh, I don't think you should see it, but... If you're sure... Parallax had security cam footage from the hallway outside Hayden's apartment encrypted on their network. Just a short clip. It looks like Hayden started to struggle with a couple of big dudes when they broke through the door and one of them shot him. Oh shit. I also found some chatter about it on some darknet channels. It wasn't a kidnapping. Somebody went there to murder him. <laughs> I'm so damn sorry. about this new scenario. Uh, if you'll excuse me. Stayed until they kicked me out of the system. I'll try to find some kind of lead on why this whole thing started in the first place. Maybe I can find something out about who killed Hayden and why Parallax has a copy of the footage. It ain't much of a silver lining, but we have the answer on Hayden's fate. Maybe it's time to call it quits. Anyway, I'll talk to you later. Mm. Just to remind. <laughs> but yeah, this game has drama. Um. To, uh, return oh so briefly back to the um <clears throat> uh, conversation about kind of like hacker speak and things um there's a lot of kind of like you know the movie hackers style hacking where it's just you know a visual interface of like flying through server hallways and stuff like that but there is like a certain subset of cyberpunk that does a little bit of actual um infosec research and tends to kind of feed that back into the dialogue and i do wonder whether the writers of this game did a degree of that with Tomcat, because I don't know that much about kind of like internet, that kind of level of internet security, but it all seemed pretty mm. plausible. Um, I mean, reasonably. Like, there, there wasn't necessarily anything completely like pseudo sci fi, mm. science y computer jargon. It was all relatively real stuff, just whether or not it works that way is. <laughs> Is up in the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. That's, that's that's interesting of that kind of like a uh, authenticity because especially for uh, cyberpunk games that are set relatively close to now and they put a bit more of a focus on the technology being um, very plausible. But mm. then there's the kind of like um, 
sci-fi cyberpunk where it's like you know everybody has flying cars and uh, how does that even like work physics wise we have no idea so it's interesting mm-hmm. that it's that kind of realm although i did notice that uh, hover technology absolutely exists in this world so i guess it's a bit of a blend of both yeah, anyway we, were, we, we should probably return to the sad times uh, wrong control i'll take uh touring sure thing oh you're back Uh, you can take. Do you still want to take the narrator well? Or... I'll let you have a turn. Mm-hmm. During. You know, Aiden was a brilliant programmer. Far ahead of his time. I am a machine, and intrinsically, I do not have all the glands and visceral chemical reactions that make humans so emotional and brilliant. But his code is a flawless replication of that inside my own personality algorithms. I don't think I've ever felt this. This this anger! It fouls my processes and fills my RAM with frustrating half-finished plans of revenge. My motherboard burns in my casing from how little I can rest. I'm in pain! I can't make it go away! I I do not like the thoughts I'm having about the people who did this to him. Can you turn them off? I... I could. I can disable these modules. But if I turn off every emotion I don't want to feel, what does that mean to me? Would I still be me? If I were human, turning off my emotions would be seen as extremely unhealthy. There is a wealth of information on the MeshNet about human psychology. I just don't know how much of it applies to myself. Either way, Hayden deserves my grief. It is my way of honouring him. It may be the only way I can. I offer it freely. Did you see the jade plant? Its death is unfortunate, but fitting. (laughs) Yet another thing to be guilty for. who killed my progenitor I need to finish this I don't know what I'll do afterwards but I need to see this through Ooh. I mean that is depending on the circumstances fully impossible um, that I not quite sure is necessarily in the character of the narrative really or at least not having yeah. to in the character so far I, I, I feel like the last ones are pretty solid yeah. we'll find them and the truth Turing. what does the truth mean anymore what does it matter will finding the truth bring back Hayden will it fix the pain they've left me in Yes, you're right. Knowing the whys and wherefores will bring closure to this. I could use a measure of closure. Ah, uh. Bloop! (laughs) I think for now, we should keep knowledge of Hayden's death between you, Tomcat, and I. They give us an edge if the people we seek don't know how much we've already discovered. We'll talk 
after you've had some time to rest. You likely need sleep and uh, I need some time to... Sad robots in the RPG. Ah, oh, God, Turing. Why do you do this to me? Uh. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, Pixie, you are absolutely free to join the call uh, while we're in a little bit of an inter... inter Hi, hello. Hey. Good morning. I trust you slept well. Mm -hmm. uh, Pixie, uh, would you mind going into the on-air chat channel and clicking the link that's there, and you'll be able to screen share as well. Provided you're in developer mode. I don't know if you need to have developer mode on. Mm -hmm. uh, I did. It didn't do anything until I did it. Ah, I see. <laughs> oh, also, would you mind mic checking for me, Pixie? I can't hear you. I can hear you. You're a little quiet, but I'll bring you up in the mix on my side, so that's okay. Thank you. There we go. Yeah, I think I'm gonna need to do the same. How's how's Pixie's volume for everyone else? As in the people watching. Yeah, I I believe that if I raise uh, Pixie's volume that's a on very my good side, point. Then everybody will hear that, so we should be okay. I can also turn the game audio down slightly as well, which I think I probably need to do. Um, do do do. Uh, in terms of voice acting, Pixie, we kind of just generally rotate as characters come in and out. So if there's a character that you're like, ooh, ooh, mine, absolutely say, and then you can do the thing. Okay, thank you. Uh, also, uh, why do you mind introducing yourself for, oh. for the chat? Okay, hi, my name's Pixie Q. I'm a streamer, costume character, and 3D artist, and I do like to dabble in voice acting, so I'm very grateful to be here. Ah. Yeah, we're all we're all trying to improve our voice acting game a little bit, um, especially since a lot. Not of us me. Do... I'm great. <laughs> <laughs> since we all do a lot of tabletop RPGs, uh, this kind of like doing read-throughs like this are really is really good practice, actually. Uh, but yeah, yeah, uh, we we like to have fun here. Um, but let's. let's I really want to wanna play a gruff boy. I want to find some. <laughs> I want an opportunity to break out my gruff boy. I, I mean, yeah, I, I'm I'm usually pretty good at doing uh, gruff male characters, but the next one that will come along, I'll let you, I'll let you take Ray. Aw, thanks, sweetie. Yeah. I'm fine. What's the plan for the day? Ah, now that we are both refreshed, I feel it wouldn't hurt to recap our progress and determine if any changes should be made based on our successes and failures. Let's talk about how things are going so far. Ooh, exposition. Hey, he's dead. <laughs> Since your journalistic efforts are a big part of why I originally recruited you, we can start there. Your inquiring mind has been a huge boost in our journey thus far. Oh, stop. As of wrong, I can't talk to people as intently as you, so I must say I'm quite grateful for your skills in that regard. You're diligent in your day-to-day -day work as well, which further grants my hope in you. This kind of feels like it's uh, like a commenting on card. all of your actual gameplay. Also, yes, actually, that's true. If I if we if we played this through in a way where I'm like a massive asshole, to her, it would probably be like, why are you like this? Or if you're not like asking questions and you're not like going through all the dialogue options, I imagine it wouldn't be like. How are you hired? <laughs> yeah. I notice you get straight to the point. Beyond journalistic persistence, let's take a look at how we've performed in other responsibilities, specifically our choices in overcoming obstacles. This is a performance review. Terrible. It 100% <laughs> is. Please stop being so corporate. <laughs> I must say, our first hand hurdle was handled masterfully by you, and we avoided any further issue. Great start! Test rank. 
Furthermore, I am pleased with your utilization of non-violent methods. Eliminating any excessive risk should allow us to move swiftly. I wonder if this game is beatable if you are just a violent asshole throughout the entire thing, because I'm sure that must give you Probably. a game at some point. It keeps warning me that I could just suddenly lose my progress if I make bad choices, so who knows. And finally, I was quite impressed by your ability to adapt on the fly, as they say, and perform so well when thrust into a sudden situation. You are good at minigames. Lastly, I'd like to discuss how we're getting along with our companions and allies along the way. It's important. I was very impressed with your negotiation abilities with those kids. We got our data cache, and they went on their way. We've hopefully learned a lesson too. Jess is a bit of a harder read, but she did agree to help us out in a big way. As long as her brash nature doesn't tempt you to lash out, I think things will go smoothly. Detective Rivers was good to involve as well, but I can tell you enjoy having a familiar face around. We have not met Lexi Rivers on this stream so far. Uh, she is a cop who used to date our sister, and she's all like, yeah, I'm tough and cool, and I used to be a rebel back in the day, but now I'm trying to settle down and have a peaceful life. But oh no, you drag me right back in. She's that, that kind of like a noir character. She could prove to be our greatest aid, as long as we make it worth her time. No funny business. Tomcat seems to genuinely care for our cause, and I have no trouble with letting their expertise guide them. Out of everyone else, they seem to be easiest to get along with too. And finally, you and I. I'm sorry I was mean to you, Turing. Don't hate me. <laughs> I must say, we have worked together better than I ever expected. I hope you feel the same. I feel confident in our combined ability, and I enjoy your company as well. Please continue showing me around the city as we continue our search. Unfortunately, we've just about run out of leads. Perhaps Tomcat was able to find something of use in Parallax's network while they were inside. Pix, mm, mm, mm. uh... would you like to take over touring from here? Yes. Because if uh, what's his name shows up, then I'll be doing that. Um, touring? Mm -hmm. uh, sure. Adorable okay. little non-binary bean of a robot. I'm sure they did. I hope so, but I feel a little bad for relying on them as much as we do. Oh no, they're cute. <laughs> I know. Always going so far for Hayden. They must have been close. Oh! Speaking of them, incoming call from Tomcat! <laughs> Forwarding video and audio. <laughs> Morning. Sorry. Uh, how, how you been doing, hon? I'm fine. Tomcat, thank you for your concern. Well, okay. Just just say the word if I can help out in any way. You hear? Of course. In fact, I was hoping you might have a lead for us to start working on it. Otherwise, we're down to canvassing Hayden's address book and seeing if any of his contacts have an idea about who might have had a desire to talk to him. But that's just fishing in the dark. Well, I pulled a fair amount of data from the Parallax servers before they managed to keep me out, but it'll take me a while to go through it. A lot of it's unrelated. TPS reports, maintenance logs, juicy meat for another corp for other corporations, but about as useful as dirt to us. It'll take me a while to decrypt all of Hayden's files, but maybe we'll find something there. So no, I don't have as much of a whiff as 
I don't have as much as a whiff of a trial on oh. who's behind this. Though I, I recently got a strange request from a friend of a friend. Someone's been messing with the articles of a news organization named Augmented Eye. Hmm. Seems like the network security head there is asking around for cyber trackers to help figure out how their reports get changed. The original files on their servers are untouched. In their system, everything looks peachy keen. When you view the site from the outside of the network, things have changed up. A word here, a phrase there. It's subtle, but often has a big impact on the article's tone. Someone with deep access to Parallax's mesh net is changing what's being shown. I ain't sure if it's related, but maybe y'all can head down to the main Keiko offices and try talking to the gal that runs Augmented Eye. Her name is Zen. I ain't got the time or the desire to stick my nose that far out for a stranger, but it seems like your kind of deal. Hmm. It does seem to be a bit of a stretch. Hmm. But if we have to wait for you to work on the data we've collected anyway... What else you got to do, Torin? God damn it! Would be happy to look into it. Alright! I'll parse... I'll parse... I'll pass the word along that you'll be in some time today stick your noses in. <laughs> and I'll send y'all word as soon as I get anything worth hunting down. Excellent! Thank you, Tomcat. We're grateful for your continued assistance. No problem, Turing. Are you uh, sure you're gonna be okay? Maybe you should take a little more time. You've been through some shit in the past few days. I said I was fine. Thank you for your concern, but I'm fine. Mm. I have already handled the reality of hate and stuff. It's time to move on with the investigation. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to step on you. <laughs> I'm just... Uh, I'm worried. So, uh, I'm here if you need anything. Understood. Uh, I apologize for my tone, Tomcat. We'll be in touch. Alright. Later, Turing. I like how nobody ever talks to the protagonist. Nope. <laughs> It's like, is only bother. the robot matters. <laughs> the protagonist is here like, this is fine. Um, <laughs> it's interesting because uh, a lot of this game is based on Snatcher. And uh, in Snatcher, Gillian Seed talks like all the time. And uh, at least one third of the dialogue is him being incredibly horny with every woman he runs into. So... <laughs> It yeah, you said like this was a. a I was gonna say you said this was a Kojima game. It's um yeah it's 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 um Snatcher is very much an early Kojima game. Um, but I guess this takes the stylistic aspects, but not necessarily the like um, tone necessarily. Okay, we have a lead, however tenuous. I've highlighted the K O S S I O Corp office building on your map. Cross IO Corp. Okay. Also, while we're talking to Tomcat, I received an email from Dr. Fairlight. Explain. Ah, oh, greetings, Caster. I hope you'll forgive me for a voice only message, but I'm undergoing my treatments and uh, would not call myself presentable for a video call. Still, I wanted to inform you of an idea I had while looking into our mutual acquaintance's disappearance. I haven't had any luck with my contacts inside Parallax, but I was reminded of an old friend by the name of Melody Flores, who may know more about the nature of Hayden's research. She's the owner of Flower Cybernetics, 
and Hayden has been known to work closely with them on projects involving the intersection of Parallax's systems and the implants that Flower designed. Melody and I are no longer on speaking terms, so I'm afraid I can't introduce you. But perhaps the intrigue of Hayden's little robot will get you entry into her home. I hope this lead serves you well. If you need anything else from me, I'll be in and out of the hospital room where we've met for the next few days. I will send word if I have any other insights or discoveries. Yours, Dr. Yannick Fairlight. So Yannick Fairlight we met in the hospital after being tasered looking into Hayden's apartment. Uh, he is an incredibly rich old guy who used to work with Hayden. Um, and is super corporate. Um, he's basically bored and rich and can kind of do whatever, but is interested in this because, you know, uh, Hayden and him were friends. Whether he's trustworthy is... Eh. Oh, do you want to take this pixie? Oh. Interesting. I had no knowledge of Hayden ever working with flower cybernetics, but now I'm starting to understand just how little I really knew about his research. Mm, maybe this melody can reveal more about the purpose of my construction. He must have kept my development secret for a reason. Hopefully, we can talk our way in. I have highlighted Melody's home on your map. Okay, can we do stuff? Okay, we can now either follow Tomcat's lead to KCOB or Fairlight's lead to Melody's home. Up to you where to go first. Tomcat's lead. Led us in the direction right so far, but Fairlight has resources and his tip might end up being more relevant. It depends on what you want our focus to be on, in terms of tracking Hayden's trail. Should we follow the media? Or the tech? It's fitting. They're the two factors that make Neo SF so unique and wonderful. If we explore them both to the fullest, there's no way we won't be closer to the answer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for this, this run, um, at, because at the start of the stream we kind of uh, talked a little bit about um, the things that we're expecting uh, in the game, which I will actually flick back to very, very briefly. So some of the themes we're looking at is uh, how does it handle AI and uh, what is digital sentience and sapience? Um, what is the role of the media in this world and how does this game discuss queerness as a metaphor? Uh, since we're looking into the media a little bit for the themes, I think let's go to, uh, go to K-Cob and see yeah. what's good. I'm getting awesome. myself pumped up to do voices. Yeah. Also, I'm gonna say. <laughs> Alright, let's map. So we can either go to Koso or Koso. Going. Here we are. <laughs> Look at all of these weird cars. The K-O-O-S, hmm? I.O. Corporation Office Building. It looks like most of the businesses on this block are a part of the same corporate coalition under K.O.S.S.I.O. Is, is that important? Well, perhaps. At the very least, it means it's unlikely they're the ones interfering with Augmented Eyes articles. Not impossible, but unlikely. Ooh, uh, how so? Generally, the company from Collation didn't have a whole lot of overlap. <laughs> Augmented Eye is a news app focused on local tech and culture stories with an emphasis on hybrids, rights, and cybernetic issues. Okay. None of the other companies in the Coalition cover news, so they aren't related at all which is very much standard practice for these groups. Mm -hmm. 
may have nothing to gain by inviting companies with whom they compete, unless none of them would benefit by trying to undermine augmented eyes credibility as a new source. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, I actually used to work for a coalition. Uh, a media coalition. I used to uh, work for a company called Northern and Shell, uh, who did uh, two newspapers, uh, the Daily Star and the Daily Express. But they also, for a while, owned uh, Channel Five, which was an interesting combination of those things. It feels um, surprisingly powerful for a single media mega corporation to be able to both reach an audience through both newspaper and TV, and use those mediums to promote the other. Uh, how the newspapers like talked about Big Brother, for example, since Big Brother is a Channel Five property, it was very interesting. Uh, hmm. Let's we we can skip some of the, ex uh, the exposition for now. Maybe another news outlet. Yes, another news organization would be the most likely culprit here. All right, let's go in a building. The Meshnet says Augmented Eyes SF office is run by an individual named Zin, and Tubcat confirmed she's expecting us. Let's go. Let's make sure to keep your other news outlet theory in mind, and we can follow up on it afterwards. All we have to do now is head up and talk to her. Uh, I think, well, let's call this in advance. You can take Zin. Sweet. I'll do it. No shenanigans this time. Me? Shenanigans? Never. So, the fuck is that? It's a Gumi. <laughs> Zin's IK47 Executive Series ROM. Designed for office and high-level account maintenance. A tiny rabbit for maintenance purposes, sure. It reminds me of that, uh, like, Star Wars cleaner droid that just looks like an upturned bin. Ha! <laughs> a super family link, sure. Oh yeah! A super family link! This plays all of the old hits, like Yonkey's Peninsula, Water Rash, and Super Slug 3, Revenge of the Super Slug, which I guess is Yoshi's Island. No idea what that is, and that's clearly Metal Slug, but Water Rash? Hmm. Hmm. Also, wait, did you say Yoshi instead of Yoshi? Yoshi? Yoshi. Oh, that's a British thing! That, okay. No, it's not. I no, said Yoshi. No, it's Yoshi. Oh! Okay, fascinating. Mike. I, I have an I have another British friend who says Yoshi instead of Yoshi, and that's it has amused me. I've always said Yoshi as well. Yeah, no, I think what? it's, it's Yoshi. Yeah, but guess, it, I guess it depends on it says Yonky, the so first I... time you hear it. Mm. Ultimately, like I've I've heard plenty of people say Yoshi rather than Yoshi, um, but eh, that's fine. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it's just a funny quirk. Yeah, I, I'm I'm definitely not one of those people that kind of argue whether it's Mario or Mario. <laughs> gross, let's not. Uh, it's a me! It's me, redacted. Anyway, Zin. She is solid makeup game. Touch do Zin. Not, do not kidding? touch Zin. No. No. Oh, hello. Welcome to Augmented Eye. You must be the journalist my network admin said would be showing up. Have a seat. Would you like a drink? Oh, she's nice. Let's <laughs> see, hot. Let, let's not order a uh, hassy. More water would be nice. My assistant will bring it right away. Is that the rum? Look, I'll start off by saying I'm a little uncomfortable about bringing in another journalist to look into this. <laughs> Whatever you dig up, I'll have to explain to the rest of the press. But it's still better than the other options. Chances are I have another corporation scoping out my territory. If they aren't in the coalition, they'll be expecting a corporate spy, not a news hound. If they're in the co coalition, it won't look good for me to send in my own reporters against my allies. Hmm. Interesting. Even if I do end up being right. So if I'm damned either way, I'd rather it be by the media. 
At least then we can fight back on a familiar battlefield. Pragmatic. Now, what do you want to know about our problem here? Someone is tampering with your articles on the mesh. That's long and short of it. My network admin is pulling their hair out over it. I'm not gonna pretend to understand. I'm not gonna pretend I understand everything they say, but from what I understand, the changes to our articles aren't being made from inside our network. The versions on our servers are still the originals, but at some point after they hit the mesh, they get changed. I'm hoping that you can do some digging, maybe hit up your contacts and get a lead on who might be doing it. Even if I have to get answers from the nightly news, it will be a big help. Hmm. I'm sure this isn't an inside job. Uh, we kind of know the first answer already, Turing Covenant. Why are you so sure this isn't an inside job? I guess I'm not, but my network admin assures me it's all coming from somewhere else. They told me that they tore out all of the routers that broadcast the mesh and replaced them with fresh ones. Hmm. All kinds of tricks involving IP addresses and DNS changes that I'm not even going to begin to claim I understand. I pay them big bucks, so I'm inclined to believe them unless you dig up something that tells me otherwise. Hmm. Any idea where... Do you have any idea where I should start looking? Not really. My admin says that only someone with intimate access to Parallax's network protocol could make these kinds of changes as something passes around the net. Personally, I think it's a clever hacker rather than someone inside Parallax itself. The public trust rating of Parallax makes them look like a saint among wolves, so their control over the mesh network provisions is strangling. It's trivially easy to set up ROMs to use a different OS than LIPS, or a different mesh net protocol without that trust. Or, you know, Parallax is abusing its power to spread pro-tech propaganda. Doubtful they need to. I'm sure you'll be a good journo and bring me back the right answer. Oh, they still have to ask us then, fine, whatever. What kind of changes are being made? Oh, I'm like Batman now, apparently. Mostly little things. Word choice, tone of the writing, things that make the writer appear more or less extreme on a topic. So far, almost all of the edits seem to be making articles more positive on new technologies coming out, and more critical of organizations like the Human Revolution. Hmm. That's interesting. False flag operation. Huh? That's actually what tipped us off. A harsh criticism one of my writers made about the Human Revolution protests was changed to be downright vitriolic, and I had a hell of a time putting out the fires. My writers and readers aren't exactly fans of them, but I'd rather not pick fights with the human re revolution if I don't have to. Okay, let's start. I know tin hat conspiracies aren't an ideal start, but it's the best we can do with the info we have. Mm. Anything else I can tell you, off the record? If you want it on the record, it'll cost your firstborn and a really good cigar. She doesn't look like the kind of person who smokes, but also I believe that. Um, hmm. Can you think of any other reason why you're being targeted? Like what? There isn't much more I can tell you about Augment's die, really. It's a fairly simple and straightforward operation, if I say so myself. 
We started off in Venezuela as a sleek current event and news organization in 2055, almost 10 years ago now. We focus on more in-depth reporting of on-the-street happenings on top of major news. We're one of the few good ones left. Hmm. <laughs> I like we both snorted at that at the same time. <laughs> yep. Once folks in other cities saw the type of reporting we do, they all clamored for it. They invested in the right places and it paid off. Cos IO Court is happy to have us here in the OSF. It wasn't until Hypertech started hitting the public sphere that we had to make any changes to our model. All of that said, I can't see why anyone would target us, unless they're just trying to embroil us in a mudslinging match with human revolution. And there are much more direct ways of making that happen. Uh, actually, we'll have a brief pause here in terms of plot, because I think this is an interesting thing worth discussing about the idea that um, people trying to push a message go and, like, alter the news to do so. That feels like a... how to put this? At the time that... The, when did this game come out? Because it came out recently, but not super recently, within the last five years or so. But the way that people tend to push strong messages these days is through alt media, like, you know, social media and YouTube and things like that, rather than necessarily, like, stealth hacking reporting. What's interesting to me isn't necessarily that they're changing the message, they're just making them look more extreme. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. they're not saying, they're, they're not like putting words in their mouth and going, oh, well, they're anti human revolution when in fact they're supporters of. They're literally just going, this middle centrist newspaper is actually an extreme right wing newspaper, or an extreme left wing newspaper. Mm -hmm. Which yeah. is an odd, an interesting idea in itself mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I, Ali says that this maybe came out around 2016 which sounds about right to me and a lot can definitely change in how internet culture operates in three years so hmm. sorry you were saying it, yeah it definitely strikes me as you know I, I made the joke of you know false flag operation but it does kind of strike me as it, it's an so this exact method of like literally modifying the news is, you know, obviously it's not really being done these days, at least that anyone knows of, but I feel like a version of this is definitely done in the sense of shifting how people view other news sources to like the, the, the whole fake news thing, basically. It, not, 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 not even fake news. I'm not even talking about news that isn't true. I'm talking about um, painting organizations and like twisting people's perspectives to push. Yeah, them I meant to... the concept of fake news. Oh I, yes, like... yes. Yeah. Um, that and like the the perception of MSNBC as like an ultra left um, news organization is one hilarious, but um to definitely um definitely reveals just how much people's perceptions of news outlets are being like pushed to the edges mm -hmm. which is inadvertently um you know pushing people towards you know their own extreme outlets it's very much happening in society as whole as a whole like i was at a friend's party a few weeks ago and most of my friends are very left-leaning people and yet they're having this conversation like they genuinely believe you can't disagree with people anymore because when you do you get called a nazi and stuff and i'm like oh, have any no. of you actually been called nazi by anyone mm. and they're all like well no but and it's like <laughs> so people have told you that when they disagree with people they get called nazis have you considered maybe their opinions are awful mm -hmm. uh, or but yeah, like you know, lying. Uh, this this conversation uh, definitely reminds that they me. are themselves are putting across the idea that they have heard that someone else was called a Nazi, mm -hmm. and you know, like I I am involved in a lot of left wing discussions, 
and I see a lot of stuff online where they're being targeted, and I can count on the number of hands, the number of times I've seen anyone called a Nazi on like one hand, and it was because they were being a Nazi, <laughs> um, in the very literal sense. Uh, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm very strongly reminded of. Uh, because we want to kind of keep this extremely current. This is the cyberpunk discussion we wanted and needed. Um, with the kind of recent fad of uh, milkshaking, um, there was mm. one person who decided to be kind of like, I have been aggressed too. And there's just a terrible photo of him essentially having spilt yogurt on himself. <laughs> right. <laughs> in in the in the bid to spread the message that this was a very severe thing happening to all sorts of people. Uh, it also but then it's like, yeah, the 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 recent example of the news article, uh, or rather the Twitter journalist, being all like, "Yes, milkshaking is a crime and should be treated as such. It's an assault." And then their same commentary on the woman who was strangled or choked in the um, wasn't the House of Commons. There was an interview, mm -hmm. and a politician effectively choked out, <laughs> or like tried to choke a female reporter, I think. Mm. Uh, and their response was like the exact same person. Like their tweets were mirrored side by side, with one of them being like, "Well, milkshaking is assault and a crime, and should be treated as such." And then, more or less, going, "Well, who hasn't choked a colleague?" <laughs> um, like, and it, wow. it, it wasn't literally like that, but you could see the right-wing politician literally physically assaults someone oh brushing it off left left-wing people throwing milkshake on literal nazis hey this is a crime and they deserve to be punished to the full extent of the law mm -hmm. and it's just like it's it's absolute lunacy yeah yeah i i do wonder actually if this was if in an alternate universe where this game is made now i do like think that this this particular story arc uh talking about the idea of um uh, changing the message using uh, digital subterfuge might talk about social networking a bit more rather than the news directly being changed. But yeah, I, d I just kind of wanted to bring that up as a bit of an interesting conversation about the game world. Uh, mm. Yeah. And working in web hosting, I see this kind of thing literally happening. Mm -hmm. uh, not necessarily with news being monitored, uh, altered, but um, they're talking about it like it's some major difficult thing. Mm. It's very simple <laughs> to do what um, they are describing here, um, mm. but it wouldn't be done the way they do it. So, um, in there, the, one of the most common hacks you see is uh, there is a file called a HD access file, which many, many, many sites have. And essentially, what will often happen is a hacker will inject code that says, if your traffic comes from Google, redirect it to this page otherwise ignore it so if i the site owner go to visit my website everything's normal i don't know what you're talking about but the person who's trying to find your website and googling it ends up clicking the link and then they get somewhere completely different and similarly uh google often then ends up um indexing that hacked page as your mm. website mm. um and so the scenario normally it's like you know you your site is a website about scuba gear and they end up on a chinese website selling viagra pills but you could very easily simply clone their website with slight alterations and do the exact same thing and most people would be none the wiser mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. until the kind of backlash that she's talking about where people are outraged that you've written this thing and you're like what the heck are you talking about we mm. have not written such you know mm -hmm. we didn't say that interesting interesting anyway thank you for like humoring me for this kind of like uh, it's all track. good i think um trying to have like one of these kind of chats about how these games topics apply to the wider world i'd like to do at least once an episode i think that's an interesting discussion but uh yeah we should probably i we have about like 40 minutes on the kind of runtime so uh let's wrap cool, this cool. up shall we no if anyone else has articles being manipulated and all right look i wasn't going to tell you this if it gets out i'd have to answer some really hard questions so, you didn't hear this from me. 
you might want to go check out TMI Entertainment and Charlie Nova. <laughs> TMI Charlie, Entertainment. Charlie Nova. Oh boy. I mean, Charlie Nova is an excellent screen name. Are you kidding? <laughs> that sounds like someone who I am ready to voice already. Mm -hmm. That's all I'll say. And remember, you take a bite out of him with my name as your defense, I'll drop you fast. What's the real reason you're bringing in outside help? Hmm? Your own journalist should be able to handle digging up some dirt on a hacker. Why are you asking me? What, not wanting to answer prying questions from my coalition board isn't a good enough reason? Because I'd really like to avoid that. And look, you've covered culture wars, right? My journalists are good, but they're mostly good at gadget reviews. Implant releases, not taking too many stims so they remember what they did at raves for the after-party reports. <laughs> this needs an investigative journalist with serious contacts, not tech personalities. The fact that my network admin recommended you to me means you probably know the right people. Now, does that cover it? I'd like to remove my nose from your ass. <laughs> That's it for now. I'll get back to you if I have more questions. No, don't bother. In hindsight, I should probably have been a bit more circumspect about speaking to you. <laughs> Plausible deniability and all that. I won't ask you to lie in anything you write, but do remember you got in contact with me not even second hand, but third hand. I certainly didn't sick you on anyone. Wink wink, nudge nudge, or whatever. If you need anything else, have your person get with my person. Don't come here directly. Now, I'd show you the door, but you know the way. And this isn't the only fire I'm trying to put out. Good luck, and goodbye. Hmm. I like that her personality uh, changed quite notably from the start to the end of that conversation. <laughs> yeah. got increasingly tired with us. Well, that was more confrontational than I'd expected, considering she was the one needing help. Hmm. She never brought you that water. Either. <laughs> Is it always like this, Costa? <laughs> oh, oh, oof. Wow. That last one. Um, she knows the game, but we didn't walk away with nothing. Mm, very true. I will admit that I am interested in the possibility of a link back to Parallax. If all of this really is due to somebody manipulating the mesh now on the inside, it might give us the leverage we need to find out what happened to Hayden, once and for all. I have to say, I love these background vehicle designs. <laughs> they are so goofy. They said I will take care. They s oh, that said, I will take care not to get my hopes up. We should make no assumptions when investigating. At least we led ourselves down a false path. Anyway, seems like our next step is... What? What the? What? Oh. Oh, oh my god. Oh my god. <gasps> oh. Oh, what? That's him. Looks like she's falling for me hard. <laughs> the what? Oh my god. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> I mean, oh, sorry. I mean, I mean the second <laughs> Carry is on. very useless to say, but... <laughs> she was demonstrated. An actual use of the word demonstrated, Jesus. Is that? I've never seen that word before. Emergency services are already on the way, and we are severely ill-equipped to help her. It, it literally means to throw something out of a window, so... Damn. Yeah. 
Turing with the vocabulary, he's mm -hmm. winning that spelling bee. Mm -hmm. Wow. We should head back to our office and see if we can determine what happened here. Perhaps we can still dispense justice. Did he say we should head back to our office? Because I feel like hers would be more no, prudent. I'm pretty sure. Uh, yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, he wants to sneak through her things. Got it. Got to get the scoop. Oh, the rabbit room has been busted. Hmm, it looks like the desk has been cleared off. Let's take a look around, but be careful not to disturb any evidence. The police will be here soon. I see that the game's console is entirely fine. Shredded Clearly, game. defenestrators of poor taste. Mm -hmm. The flawless foliage hath fallen. Oh, okay. Even a room like that doesn't deserve an end like this. A room like that? What does that mean? Shame. Judgy little snot. A picture of a toupee is an odd thing to frame. Oh, wait, that's an animal of some kind. Okay. <laughs> this, I'm pretty sure that's Nathan's internal monologue when someone sends him a picture of a, their pet. Yeah, pretty much any. Like, oh, my dog is so cute. It's like, that sure is a living thing with hair. Great. <laughs> Ah, her personal computer is not password protected at the moment. Give me a moment to look through her files. Best to keep your fingerprints off of the keyboard. Hmm, most of this isn't very interesting. Committee reports, financials, articles, submissions. Oh, here we go. According to this email between Zin and her network admin, her lead on TMI Entertainment is a little more solid than she led us to believe. The admin ran a web crawler looking for changes in writing styles. Some blog posts by their head anchor, Charlie Nova, stood out like a sore thumb. Apparently, he's a bit pompous, if in an affordable, affable way. And his blog usually just details his day-to-day -day life. But ever since the human revolution has been in town, he's been smearing them with more venom than you'd expect, considering how neutral his on-air reporting has been. Zin seemed to think he was just complaining about the protesters fouling up traffic, and whoever is manipulating these posts on it to make him look critical of the movement as a whole. Just like the augmented eye journalist. This Charlie fellow is the one we need to talk to. Alright. Let's hustle. Oh. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. In okay. Investigate the things. The smoky looking desk that curves out of the edges. Great, cool. Uh, let's investigate the window. I think that's probably where they be. My thermal sensors only detect a single set of lingering footprints, and they end almost three feet away from the window. Considering the density of this glass, I can't imagine Zin jump from that far and manage to throw herself through the pane without help. But who could have done it? I don't see any obvious marks on the floor or any other thermal hotspots. It was the Gumi bot. Hmm. <laughs> Who's saying no one else was in here? It doesn't look like it. We should go. There isn't anything else here. And the police are almost on the scene. Not the cops. <laughs> oh, I did want to do Lexi. You can do Lexi. Yeah, thank you. I'll Son take over, a... um... Turing, sure. Yeah. Son of a... I should have figured the two of you would be here. You just won't stay out of trouble, no matter what I say, will you? 
This is a total misunderstanding. I assure you, Detective Rivers, we are merely in the wrong place at the wrong time. We had an appointment with Zim to discuss a possible lead and found her office in this state of disrepair. Of course you did. Damn it. Fine, fine. Get the hell out of here before anyone else shows up. We'll chat about the case more when I'm not busy scraping bodies off the pavement. You hear me? Certainly, Detective Rivers. I'll forward you a report of what we know immediately, and we can speak further at a later time. Yeah, yeah, whatever. Get moving. That's not really a very helpful response to someone giving you mm -hmm. everything they know. Mm -hmm. Phew! Yeah. <laughs> um, why did you lie to Lexi? We could have told her about the articles. Because it's better this way! We are chasing smoke trails! You think she would assist such an unlikely investigation? I do not need you to infer upon my motivations or highlight my du duplicity! <laughs> so shrill. Detective Rivers has every bit of information that Sin gave us on that computer. Her investigation will not be hampered by our absence, whereas ours is halted if we're stuck giving answers she can just as well get from a hard drive. Literally. Alright. Has it occurred to you that whatever threw, whoever threw Zin out of that window could be after the same thing we are? Except to silence the story rather than to get it out. We have little time for fooling about. We must get to Charlie Nova before something happens to him too. Now, unless you have further recriminations to level at me, you must not squander the time by my dishonesty, Porter. I have highlighted the main Neo SF offices for TMI Entertainment on your map. Turing, I love you, but I swear to God, if you make me bully you for being such a nerd. Let's go! <laughs> I mean, I suppose it shouldn't be a surprise that this uh, near enough to human robot can lie, but yeah. Also, TMI has like some of the best music in the game. Hell yeah. Hmm, I hope some pity for me still remains considering my recent turn, because I'm honestly not sure where we should start. I suppose we should just ask the receptionist to point us to somebody who can answer our questions. Uh, Pixie, do you want to take them or shall I? I'll take them. What do you know about Charlie? Honestly, you do have your own mesh access, yes? I'm quite certain you can handle all the casual searches you might feel like making. Let me Google that for you. T Turing is so pissy today. <laughs> Word. We hardly have time for me to blather out every bit of exposition you desire when you can just go look it up on your own. Ooh, meta. a bit on edge. Things are barreling out of our control. I'm taking it out on me. Forgive me? Let me pull up the information you requested. Okay. So what do we know about Charlie Nova? Charlie Nova is TMA Entertainment's most popular TV personality. Hmm. He's gotten consistently high ratings for almost a decade isn't afraid to tell you about it. The chatter on the mesh paints him as a bit arrogant, and in that loud, back-slapping kind of way that a media star can get away with. 
is best known for hosting Star in the Stratosphere. It's one of those talent-seeking reality TV programs. Hmm. Reality programs. That's interesting. I mean, 10 years in the game is actually a solid amount of effort for TV. Apparently, when TMI can't organically discover enough celebrities, they just manufacture them. Shade. Oh, and also, according to this blog, Charlie's hair is flawless. <laughs> uh, it's interesting, especially again, the same way that this game has changed, the world has changed in the three or so years since this game came out, that um, the X Factor as a show is no longer in syndication. Mm. Um, you know, the 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 the, con the concept of like the reality TV talent show has uh, died out in favor of like Love Island, I guess. So, uh, who really won in that exchange? But, but I think it's still a thing in America, though. Oh, all right. TMI Entertainment is a relatively popular celebrity and gossip news conglomerate. They own OK Today. They did a good job of transitioning from the traditional media models of television and news to the net-based model prevalent now, pioneered by the digital newspaper, OK Today's Scanline. Some might call their programs rags, but opinion on the mesh seems more favourable than not. <laughs> they stick to mostly good-natured prying and lean away from the seedy and nastiness that paparazzi can get up to. Glancing uh, at chat very briefly, the idea of uh, stuff like Temptation Island. Um, we sort of got that kind of stuff back in the, the, the mid noughts but um, I guess the whole kind of like talent search style TV show hasn't necessarily died, but rather than it being singers, it's now stuff like chefs and drag queens, which maybe that's an improvement. Um, it depends. I, I would uh, I'd say that those kind of like Netflix talent... has kind of cornered a lot of that market recently. Mm -hmm. um, I, I guess with chefs definitely like you know Master Chef is for sure. Like a, UK staple for forever. Um, although I guess they don't become the same kind of superstars as like Winners of Bake Off do. I think Nadia has managed to kind of make her way culturally to the Americas by now. Totally uh, honest. I don't recall seeing any of the Bake Off people anywhere other than Bake Off. Oh right. Um, maybe it's just because for uh, because I work for a uh, media maker corporation relatively cognizant of what a number of the Bake Off alumni have done. Yeah, but, it's uh, entirely possible. Nadia in particular, because she's um, really big with like families. She's like a mother of three or so. Uh, so she got a whole bunch of book deals for both cooking books and children's books, which is a solid hmm. hustle. <laughs> yeah, that's a good combo. I, uh, I, I mad respect that. Like, you know, if you can make it big doing a TV show and then be like, actually, I don't want to necessarily be known for being that one person who sings or that one person who smooches really good on a tropical island and you go and make a different career out of that that's like solid work <laughs> the media industry it's is not an easier transition yeah yeah sorry plot as such they have a positive relationship with many celebrities and regularly get exclusive scoops that keep their ratings up despite their refusal to peddle in the darker side of the celebrity news circuit Okay. Oh, she's cute. Bunny is standard. More of a puppy, really. Oh? Welcome to TMI Entertainment Incorporated. Yes. Do you have an appointment? Ooh, um... We need to speak with Charlie Nova. Oh, no. I really can't let you in without an appointment. I can maybe pencil you in for next Wednesday? We don't have time for this! People's lives are on the line here! And all you care about is an appointment! <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be mean to the receptionist, I'm sorry. 
Yeah, they're right. Oh, um, look, if it's that important, I can buzz you through to sympathy. Who I will be taking, because sympathy is amazing. But she isn't going to be very happy about being bothered off schedule. So don't get your hopes up. And uh, try not to make her too mad, okay? I'll be the one dealing with the fallout. Of course, I apologize. We will be as tactful as possible, I assure you. Okay. She's over on the other side of the room. It's straight there, because she doesn't like it when people burn the talon. Huh. I was getting very distinct Nicole Cola <laughs> vibes. There is a uh, Charlie Nova looking at me. Mm. Oh it's my gosh. me. Look at that sassy motherfucker. I actually really like his character design. Uh, this is sympathy. That's what I was sympathy thinking. Sympathy is amazing. Oh my god. Huh. Sympathy is my favorite. I want mirror shades like that. Are you kidding? <laughs> Production manager for TMI. Oh, no further details, fair enough. I thought I told Nina to cancel all my appointments for the day. I swear that girl couldn't find her ears if I taped them over her eyes. At least she makes a decent cup of coffee. Uh... uh are you sympathy? Nina said we should speak to you. Yes, I am. And if you don't mind, I keep the show running here, so I'll be brief. What are you doing in my building? We've been given a lead on a story that involves one of your personalities, Charlie Nova. Someone has been manipulating his articles on the MeshNet, turning them into scathing attacks against the human revolution. We're trying to track the culprit. We need to talk to Mr. Nova to hunt down further leads. Mr. You let your wrong do all the talking for you? <laughs> Must be one of those new interrogation models or the fresh meat raid event. Oh! Of course I know someone's been modifying Charlie's articles. I'm tracking them down myself. What I want to know is why I should help you snatch that scoop out from underneath me. Super hacker twists mesh net news for personal political vendetta. The clicks basically farm themselves. Oof. Hmm. Ooh, man. How do we want to play this? Up to you, my friend. Well, oh, Zin specifically was like, don't try to tie me to this because yeah. it's not going to fly. <laughs> Does also, Zin's dead, she so who cares? <laughs> oh man. Hmm. Let's. Okay, let's try a, a moderate approach to start off. I'm willing to break the story under TMI's banner. <laughs> I'm not hiring, kid. I admire your spirit, but I've got people putting lots of hours in on this. You're not getting the credit because you think you have a hot lead. Plus, if you really did, you wouldn't be here begging for my scraps. Hmm. Yeah, let's go for the nuclear option. Say that to Zin. Zin? Augmented eyes, Zin. What does Zin have to do with this? She's the one who gave us the lead to begin with. Then someone threw her out of her office window. <laughs> we figured Mr. Nova might be next, and we wanted to get to him first. Holy shit. Fine. I'll let you talk to Charlie. If someone is trying to kill people with this, I'd rather it be out and done with as fast as possible. I mean, shit, 
for an entertainment scene. Nobody should die for that. Hmm. But hey, watch yourself with Charlie. He's a pompous clown. He's my pompous clown. Keep it civil, or I'll throw your ass out and figure this out on my own. Now get on it, I need to make some calls. <laughs> also, uh, Charlie is like distant sprite. Look at this nerd. This is Elton John. Bottle glasses. Uh, but yeah, yeah. Uh, let's, let's talk to Charlie. He wants to take Charlie. Sure, I'll go for Charlie. Alright. I'll, I'll let uh, someone else take Protag. I'll take Protag. Or, uh, actually, you've not voiced uh, Protag yet, uh, Pixie. Do you want to have a go at that? Who's Protag? A uh, oh, protagonist? Yeah. Oh, okay. Sure. This is what's cycling through. Fantastic. How fantastic. I just love your ROM. <laughs> Ooh, the team. Not quite as stunning as mine, but still pretty grand. Also, I noticed <laughs> that his teeth are sharp, which... Hmm. Huh. Very smooth. Very clean. Bravo. <laughs> uh, sympathy is doing that thing where she waves at me to hurry things up. Right down to brass tacks then, I suppose. Oh, wait! I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Charlie Nova, host of Tonight in the Stars, and star in the stratosphere. But you already knew that, I'm sure. <laughs> what can I do for you, hmm? Why don't you tell me a little bit more about yourself? Oh, don't mind if I do. <laughs> you flatter me. Yes, you do. I can't imagine you've come all this way just to get my story, have you? After all, I've already published my very own splendid 100% original autobiography, like a Nova. But I suppose I can give you a quick rundown, even if sympathy is giving you the stink eye. I grew up here on the mean streets of Neo SF, but my jocular nature and striking countenance got me scouted for a few small product advertisements. And the rest is not so ancient history. <laughs> now I'm the host of the largest celebrity news show on the mesh, and I couldn't be happier. It's all thanks to my swarms of fans, though. They're the ones who count. <laughs> what can you tell me about TMI? Uh, I can take to improve it. Yes, any additional information on your station would be greatly appreciated. Well, it's the best damned network on the planet, I can tell you that. We put out top-notch news and entertainment, but with real heart that our competitors just can't match. But if you really want to know about TMI, you need to know about Sympathy. It's a, it's a pride and joy, after all. Sure, she can be a little acerbic, and sure, she calls me a poofy haired oaf all the time. But you can really tell she cares, you know? Deep down. <laughs> I'm not sure if that throat-cutting gesture she's making is a signal to move up to another topic, or a threat against my physical well-being. So, let's move on. What next? Have you heard that your stories are getting altered once they get posted to Nash? No, it may have come up in the last lunch meeting we had, but Sympathy assured me that it was some kind of technical glitch, and our support people were on top of it. Though top notch, the absolute best money can buy. So I don't think there's anything more to say on the subject. Looks, Charles, we're just trying to get to the bottom of the- Charles, man. 
<laughs> it's Charlie. And honestly, I'd absolutely love to help you out. Really, I just don't have the information you're looking for. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what? Do I get to read and you, you pick one? You get to one, choose. Or? I'll let you choose. No, really? Yeah. yeah. God. Oh, so much power. All right. Pressure. Okay, I'm going to do it. Chuck. I'm sure you're better informed than that, right? You're at the top of this heat, yeah? <laughs> it's Charlie. <laughs> and of course, I'm the leading man around here. Who has said otherwise? Hmm. I'm not quite certain what you think it is that I don't know, but I assure you that I know what it is. You won't be able to trip me up that easily. Hmm. Chip! <laughs> oh my god, I, I won't do it a third time. Not that soon. If they can access your stories, what else can they get on you? Huh. Nothing. The tech guys already did an audit on my online presence, and there's no evidence of any attempts of unauthorized access to any of my accounts. That's why they're having a hard time pinning down this creep. <laughs> he isn't actually changing the post from inside my account at all. So there you go. We're already on top of it. Nothing to worry about at all. Zim was thrown out of her office window in this. It's Charlie, damn it. I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say his name. Yeah, hmm. And, and wait, what? Yeah, someone murdered Zim. I think he thought you were calling him Zen. Mm -hmm. Charlie is not very smart. What on earth? Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you what I know. I didn't realize how serious this had gotten, but I'm always glad to play the hero. I like that he winks, but still looks incredibly concerned. <laughs> Yeah, sure. Unfortunately, I really only have conjecture to offer you. And trust me, I'd love to lay down some earth-shattering pronouncement and dazzle you with my investigative skills. But all I've got is flimsy threats at best. The thing is, all this stuff with my stories Stuff getting changed, making me look like I don't like the human revolution or whatever. And it started after I had a you know, upgrade made to my VR uplink hardware. Oh, what kind of upgrade? The technically legal kind. Look, I like to have a good time at a party, right? But sympathy keeps hammering on me for pounding back too much crash on the phone. Nothing illegal, but she says it makes me look like shit on camera the next day. So I went to this guy I know. Good guy, everyone uses him. He's called Nanya. <laughs> Nanya Business. He does great work. After just one simple back alley brain surgery, bing bang boom. Uh-huh. Okay. That sounds legit. I can use an app to make my VR uplink have the same effect on my brain that the students do, without all the nasty physical side effects. It could be a coincidence, though. The tech guys didn't find anything wrong with my uplink. 
And they say the modifications check out. You put a literal and figurative back door into your skull. That's fucking... <laughs> but that Nanya guy does a lot of work for media people around here, so if a bunch of posts are getting chained, maybe that's your weak link. Anyway, that's it. Pretty flimsy, but I'll send you the address and you can go talk to him. Mm -hmm. If he'll even see you, that is. <laughs> Thanks for the help. Oh, it was no problem. No problem at all. I'm quite happy to assist in any way I can. Just make sure you source me in your article, right? Maybe run a rough draft past me and I'll give you some quotes. I'm certain that'll help signal boost the story all the way to the stratosphere. <laughs> hmm. Give it the old Charlie Nova bump. Anyhow, me. sorry, uh, somebody is uh, taking my leave. But thank you for watching so much of the stream. We're about to wrap up, but uh, I'll yeah. see you out. Finish it up. Any, anyhow, I really have to get back to work. You wouldn't believe how long it takes to put all this together before a show. Hmm. Let me know how it goes with the murderous hacker thing. My wrong, call you wrong. Hmm. <laughs> I think this is a, a good time to pause the run of the game, mm. uh, but we are not necessarily done yet. We are going to have a little bit of a debrief about, you know, the uh, adventure that we've seen so far, some of the topics that we've covered, and because I like the tunes, we're going to kind of leave this in, this is my ride a beat, because uh, this is a jam, as we move back to the book club screen. So... We've had uh, a nice, a nice playthrough of Read Only Memories. Just generally, what do we feel about our, our couple hours with this game, our opinions? I'm, I'm always quite happy to be sucked into the environment because you, you know how the difference between when you're playing a game and you, you are like heavily aware that oh yeah. Blah blah blah. I'm not really invested in the story. Am I invested in the story on this one? Yeah, yeah. No, I definitely get that. I'm just gonna turn the music down a little bit. There we go. Uh, yeah, no, definitely. I think it was the way that you know it turned from we're finding a missing persons to two people are dead over the course of about an hour is uh, mm, yeah. definitely raising the stakes quite a bit. Yeah, Not definitely. definitely. I don't think I was expecting to see like that that window scene. Mm -hmm. I was like, "Oh, we're going down." Okay, like, "All right, I'm in." Okay, mm -hmm. yeah, that was something else. Because already, obviously, having our creator killed is something, but we weren't there to see that. True. <laughs> so, it brings it to another level for me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, I definitely feel that. Uh, any any thoughts, Will? Oh man, it's so. I think overall certainly enjoying it um i do feel like i missed a little bit by not seeing that beginning segment just just in terms of some of the setup of like who who a couple of the characters are and whatnot mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. catching up catching up wasn't that um great or anything like that but certainly um i probably want to go back and catch that again on the second time through yeah but it took me a while to remember time. who hayden was ah uh, yes uh, that, that's, that's <laughs> I, I, I had completely forgotten who hayden was so when we were talking about hayden initially i was like yeah i did ha registered zero significance on yeah. my the scale that's fair that's definitely fair um that is i think um i wanted to start a little ways in because um usually with any kind of games getting a good vertical slice is usually not something you get in its opening hour and uh you don't mm. necessarily get some of the deeper themes of especially story driven work usually in its beginning bit 
because I kind of wanted to... I'm glad you did, because I've definitely played the first part of this game three or four times now, uh -huh. and never got much further, because I always get distracted by something else. So, <laughs> yeah, no, I'm, I'm glad we moved past that bit. I've three yeah. times myself, so I, I was kind of like, I don't need to play through that again, necessarily. But it does mean that, yeah, some of the story beats end up getting uh, put by the wayside. And that might not matter in later games, like I intend to do... Uh, various scenarios from the Mega Man Battle Network games because I think they too are Ooh. cyberpunk um, but those games almost have no plot so it's actually pretty easy to start mm. through this. Valid. But yeah yeah the, the it's starting in medias res aside any kind of other opinions on the game? Yeah um, I, I'm sorry oh, yeah, go ahead. Okay. Oh, um, I, I overall really I really appreciate the aesthetic choices of the game. Mm -hmm. The fact that it's, you know, you definitely pointed out that it is pulling at, um, you know, a little bit of vaporwave in some places. It's like, it's an interesting mesh of lo-fi graphics and um, it, almost in like, in some ways being a um, retro version of the future, mm -hmm. though in, another, in other ways being a version of the future that you could only really plausibly um, conceive of now and have it not feel like, you know, grasping at straws. Mm -hmm. So that it's a very interesting mix there. Yeah, um, no, I agree. I think the decision to kind of make it pixel art definitely does sell it to be a retro future game rather than a future future game. I would say like the more recent Deus Ex games commit to being a future future cyberpunk. Yeah. Rather mm -hmm. than the retro future cyberpunk that this game is. I definitely feel that. Right? Um, yeah, to be honest with you, I really more wanted to touch on some of the stuff that we um, discussed prior to playing. Mm -hmm. um, thematically and stuff, because if I'm 100% honest, the aesthetic for the game itself does nothing for me. Sure. Um, like, uh, the part of the reason I struggle to get particularly far in the game is visually it's not appealing to me and gameplay wise it's not really appealing to me unless I'm actually sit in like in the mood to read a bunch of stuff yeah there is nothing here for me uh, for the most part no, um, and it's not because it's a bad game I love point and click stuff it's just I have to be in a very specific mindset and also have a bunch of time and I very rarely have either of those at the right time <laughs> I, um, I definitely understand that. The way that I finish most of the Danganronpa games is by playing them instead of sleeping. Uh, mm. Because they are, despite like this game also being more or less fully voiced, still really long to sit through. So, yeah, uh, yeah no, I definitely feel that. But no, that's a, I, a good I, point And too. I always start with like, oh, I'm going to listen to every line. And <laughs> after like 10 minutes, I'm like, okay, I can read this faster than you can talk. That's uh, me and Monster yeah. Hunter, I feel like. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. Well, Monster Hunter is a game where you're like putting a hammer into a dinosaur space and not being talked <laughs> to so i can yeah. understand being un impatient for that but oh, that's a good way to kind of like segue into ideas to take away so i'm really interested if from the kind of play that we've had so far what is the kind of like key idea that read only memories has had that you're like that's an interesting thing to kind of like file away um, well, again, we sort of came into it with the idea of looking for certain themes in terms of like handling of AI and stuff like that. Uh, I know in the very beginning of the game, you're basically told that um, Turing is super advanced and very human-like and capable of sort of thinking and being sentient and sapient. Um, but you don't really get any real emotional sense from them, except for I really want to find out what happened to Hayden, and you kind of see him getting annoyed, uh, see them getting annoyed a little bit here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, we didn't see any of that on stream. I think it was actually, th I'm surprised at how early it touched on the fact that essentially once uh, Turing learns that Hayden has died, mm. how it quite openly asked the question well yeah i can turn off those aspects of my programming mm. but then am i me anymore and well, the question is well who are you mm -hmm. like what you know if, if you acknowledge that your existence and your self is simply programming that you can switch on and off mm -hmm. how much of that is a self yeah yeah um and again, that, that's something that I find um, interesting purely because it doesn't really have a definitive answer and you can only really 
get to a point where you reach a consensus about how you feel about the subject. Um, and I feel like uh, from, you know, through the whole process, it's probably going to leave you feeling a certain kind of way mm. and you will have an opinion by the end of it. Um, whether or not that opinion will reach consensus on is another thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. But um, I, I, again, I was quite surprised that <clears throat> it even really touched on it so soon. Yeah. Because um, it is quite a core part of the game as a whole, really, because the other thing, obviously, is that Turing is one of a kind in this world. It's not like, oh, all ROMs have feelings. Mm -hmm. Turing is something different entirely who has been created specific why would you make a robot that screams <laughs> um yes. basically yeah uh which gives uh -oh. like a level of um wanting to like uh, an inherent aside from turing being cute and yeah everything the fact that they are one of a kind and if something should happen to damage turing uh mm. internally or otherwise then that is literally removing a one-of-a-kind thing from the world. Especially now that we know that the creator has died, so another yeah. one can't be made. Um, yeah. Is is interesting. Especially in the kind of society that we are now of um, always wanting to archive and back up anything we ever make. Because we kind of have to as well. Like I, I had this discussion with someone recently mm -hmm. specifically because I am, I am and always have been a hoarder mm -hmm. because I grew up poor as hell and that means that i attach financial and emotional value to things that are meaningless um because owning is a big important thing for me uh i'm moving to another country which means that i am shedding things um and i have decided i'm keeping all of my books um i have a very substantial book collection and i was telling this to a friend of mine and she was like oh well i just have everything on my kindle and because it's more convenient and i said well that's true and i have a kindle and i have books on it and i don't i, I am not anti kindle what concerns me as someone who likes to have things mm -hmm. is that uh the scott pilgrim video game i yeah. used to own that i still own it technically but there's no way for me to get it anymore because I don't have a console that already has it installed. Mm. And the PSN store, and basically everywhere else, does not allow you to download it anymore. Mm -hmm. You can't download oh. it anywhere. Um, and there's, you know, uh, uh, when you pay for something digitally, you don't own it anymore. You are basically paying to rent it until they decide to stop hosting it somewhere for you to obtain it. Mm -hmm. uh, unless you already have it on a drive functioning. Um, you know, uh, and, and digital stuff is very nebulous in that regard. Mm -hmm. A similar thing happened with Fable 3, where uh, in order to play Fable 3, you used to have to collect to the Windows Live network. Mm. Um, that doesn't exist anymore. So when you boot up that game, it asks you to connect to the network. And when you can't, and you can't even go into offline mode, mm. it'll just say, you can't connect right now, so your license can't be validated, and therefore your game, you can't play. Yeah. So it just doesn't exist you know it, it exists but it's utterly useless and there is no way to do anything with it mm -hmm. um and this is a problem i'm convinced well, uh, we're gonna see more and more of it's oh, yeah. impossible not to as games I mean, move increasingly towards a digital space uh, especially you know there's this whole consoles yeah. that are going to be cloud oriented now right mm -hmm. um That's oh no I and so that. exactly <laughs> like it's 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 a real problem that we you know we, we keep going we, we're going further and further down that path without really thinking about the challenges and how to address them mm. in relation to stuff that you know like won't be here in three years unless we make sure that we have a way to make sure it is mm -hmm. um and yeah like uh that there, there's a lot of stuff in this game in particular that actually touches on all of this you've mm. got the um the data center effectively that uh i've forgotten the hacker's name uh tomcat tomcat um has essentially disconnected no one knows it exists mm. it's still there and it's still functioning and it still has data there um but no one has any access to it uh, <laughs> And again, similarly to the idea that this creator has been killed, if something happens to poor old Turing, mm -hmm. they just that 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 existence is gone. Um, 
Yeah, no, that's definitely a, a, I think a really Sorry. big... No, I, I, I genuinely think that's a really, a really salient kind of takeaway in the context mm -hmm. of uh, real life as well as within the fiction. Um, I, uh, in a similar way to Scott Pilgrim being kind of taken off, I think it's license mm -hmm. expired because it was... Yeah, exactly. Like, the that's the thing. The movie. Uh, um, the, 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 there's a lot of archival stuff that is rapidly like people are trying to <laughs> there are certain small groups of people that are like have realized the problem air quotes mm -hmm. and are desperately trying to come up with solutions Back which like largely that, yeah. consists of getting very big hard drives and trying to replicate everything mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um and they will eventually be considered the crazy hoarders that hold on to valueless things <laughs> um but you know without them there's stuff that already does not exist anywhere except for in like mm. tiny servers in mm -hmm. someone's basement mm -hmm. definitely uh, yeah um yeah go ahead well what's what was your uh, additional takeaway oh yeah i just wanted to tag on to that real quick that yeah digital preservation is super important um just as a quick anecdote there's a um there's a project I know, I believe it's called like Project Flashpoint or something like that, and their entire MO is just like preserving every single Flash game that was on the internet in the past yep. and is now, you know, going to be completely inc incompatible with modern browsers, and they've got like a huge amount already, and a lot of them are, you know, total shovelware, but just thinking about... Um, thinking about the importance of keeping some of these some of these around because you know there could be historical significance if one of the people who made those turns into a superstar game dev mm -hmm. or even even not you know even if it never has huge historical value just the art that can be lost because mm -hmm. of the mediums we're using is yeah so i definitely feel that um mm -hmm. i think my takeaway was I think maybe smaller, but I'm. I have a I have a mixed relationship with cyberpunk as I am. I enjoy a number of the themes that it engages with, but I am pretty exhausted by the cynicism that a lot of cyberpunk mm. media takes to it. Mm. Like just you know, dark edgy you know, drug runners on the streets and. <laughs> It's what just... about Cyberpunk 2077? Um, it, it honestly, anything that gives me the um, feeling of like, we play Shadowrun and the message is we're cool people with guns. <laughs> Screw the man. Yeah, yeah. And we're Have not gonna, we're not going to go any deeper. Much hope, punk. No, I haven't, and that makes there, me. There is of... a there is a uh, a recent very strong movement towards what people are referring to as hope punk mm -hmm. which effectively is cyberpunk but the way it should be which is essentially with the underlying idea that there is hope and that we can make things better and even though there is a lot of potential for negative change we don't have to let it be negative mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. we can we, again hope punk to me is there is a small group of people who have realized what's happening and are doing everything within their power to save us from ourselves mm -hmm. by preserving all of this junk we don't need <laughs> but <laughs> might want at some point yeah i mean that sounds like um that sounds like Mega Man battle network which yeah. is my favorite um my favorite cyberpunk or cyberpunk adjacent um property hence why i made a big old free rpg about that google net battlers today um but no, so yeah i think i think this game is a nice um contributing bit to showing me like how to navigate some cyberpunk themes without you know, without getting into that um, cynicism or nihilism that tends to permeate a lot of the presentations, and especially, um, yeah, I think presentations of how AI will be treated in the future. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, seeing definitely. seeing that done in a way that feels ultimately optimistic is nice, and gives gives some decent inspiration.
yeah, no, I, I definitely, I definitely see that. Um, I uh, Mega Man Battle Network and the likes of like reboot and stuff like that were definitely also factors in my appreciation of like uh, cyberpunk. I used to kind of describe that as cyber pop because punk felt inappropriate or edgy as yeah. an idea. Uh, yeah. Uh, there is also the idea of um, in the same way that there is post punk musically to punk mm -hmm. which is a bit more kind of like mellow and tends to be a bit more positive than classic punk um uh games like transistor which we'll definitely also play on this channel um are yeah. also i were described as uh post cyberpunk the idea that we've had the dysto dystopia and then people realized it was untenable and actively worked their way to move beyond or out of that Mm -hmm. And yeah, I no, think relationships between humans and service AI is also a thing that, you know, features in a lot of my work. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm glad that Read Only Memories also kind of takes the time to explore that. It's interesting that a lot of the people in the setting, because rock Turing is one of a kind, are like, your service AI is surprisingly chatty, but that's fine. oh, that's, that's just that's, what you want. You must have that new interrogation module uh -huh. kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Like they're not fully aware that Turing isn't just following certain protocols, mm -hmm. um, and in a, a lot of ways, we have to ask whether or not Turing is just following certain protocols. Yeah. Like, yes, Turing can lie now, but isn't is that just another program? Like, is that just a behavior that? it has watched, learned, and then codified. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, dollars to donuts, it comes up at the end of Act 2 or start of Act 3 about Turing getting, like, ultra existential, I am certain. Mm -hmm. uh, Pixie, is there any kind mm -hmm. of, like, uh, takeaways that you've got from the, any ideas you found interesting in the, in the playthrough? Um... I think I'm I'm more of the kind of in the moment kind of per person. I probably should have said it at the time, oh, no, rather than at good. the end. I, I think if um, if, even if there's anything that you saw in the in the playthrough and you were like, "Man, that's cool." Other than the jumping scene, mm -hmm. I did quite like the fact that even though that guy was a bit of a ass, Charlie, mm -hmm. that they were able to convey his attitude regardless of his emotion. Yeah. Like, as an animator point of view, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think that's quite a nice attention to detail. Yeah, I, I, I think, uh, and to kind of extrapolate from that, the, the characters in this are actually quite complex, even if you only meet them briefly. Um, so it's maybe call this like highlighting the complexity even minor characters. Because like Zin, for example, Zin is very much framed as a kind of person that you probably see a lot and you can get a decent chunk of her personality from the length of that conversation. Like, you know, we talked a little bit about how her attitude towards you at the beginning and at the end of the conversation are actually super different. And then she dies and you never see her again. Um, I don't know whether we even run into Charlie again after this little, like, side story. You know what would be really interesting, actually, would be... Um... Obviously, it wouldn't work for this sort of stream, but seeing two runs side by side and having one person be interested in the characters and have another who's just trying to get to the point mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. see, because, you know, Zin is a great example where she starts out very, not, she starts out seemingly quite open and friendly and towards the end is quite brusque and like, okay, no, look, like, fine you've got what you need here's Please the information go. just get out and mm -hmm. go do the thing um and i'm i'm be really curious to know what it sort of come how it comes across if you don't go to those lengths to get to know the characters because certain conversations you think oh well i'm just going to ask this one question and skip that because i already know the answers mm. and then it's like no you have to ask all the questions <laughs> um which I think is probably part of why I, I drifted away from it yeah, gameplay-wise yeah. at some point. I think some um, bits of the early game, you can... Um, there's a point where you run into... We didn't meet him on camera, uh, mm. but Fairlight, uh, you have a conversation yeah. with him in the hospital. And you can just be like, uh, A, I'm not interested in anything you have to say, and B, I don't trust you. <laughs> which he's yeah. offended by, but the game lets that kind of proceed anyway. You don't have yeah. to actually go through the conversation. So I, I do guess, think... 
it, it does sometimes let you do that but there's certain interactions where it decides no you have to listen to all of them mm -hmm. um but yeah it would be interesting to see how because you're right like each character does come across as quite well developed even when they're quite minor mm -hmm. um and it would be interesting to see if that carries through in the conversations where you don't have to talk to you know when you don't yeah. have to tick every option to progress mm -hmm. um it would be interesting just to have that comparison actually yeah, on that note it kind of reminded me of snatcher and i think i kind of want games to be a little bit more stuff like this mm -hmm. because in snatcher when i was being a little bit too frisky with that 18 lady oh yes um, the, the daughter of the person who died <laughs> and you yeah. show up to her house and immediately start macking on her <laughs> Um, and I got locked out and there didn't seem to be a way for me to get back in so if I hadn't done what I needed to do there I don't think I'd be able to continue the game and the mm. same with um, I did something stupid by showing my ID in a place where nobody shows their ID and so I got kicked out mm. and I needed to go in there to get information to continue the story and they just kept saying oh yeah come back there's no way like i had to keep going back and there was no way for me to get in i had to just load another save file so if in this game they had it so okay you can be a dick you totally can but you're gonna mess up your save file hope you're ready like if they did that i would be like oh my god yeah let me see what all of these uh trees or let me find all the dead ends mm -hmm. kind of, i, I do accident. wonder about that I, I, I like. I'm into that. I think that's fascinating. <laughs> I, I find it impossible to be mean in a video game. I, I don't know. Um, I, 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 even though it I'm depends the kind of, on the game mm, for me. Sorry, it depends on the even though I'm the kind of person it. that doesn't. I don't think that I'm a person that gets bleed in video games or tabletop RPGs. The concept of bleed is. Uh, as you play a character, um, your emotions flow into them and vice versa. So if you're playing a character in an RPG and something terrible happens to them and then you feel bad, um, mm -hmm. I don't get that super often, but for some reason I'm just kind of, I'm very, very willing to uh, treat characters in very narrative driven games like people and not be mean to them if I don't have to be. <laughs> Yeah. No, I get that. I don't normally, yeah. unless the character's a dick. Yeah, if they no, are, Gillian then Seed like... is absolutely a dick. <laughs> See, like uh, with Mass Effect is a good example of that, mm -hmm. where um, I actually quite enjoy being a prick in mm -hmm. that game, mm -hmm. because <laughs> it's never, even when you're really being obnoxious, with the very few exceptions, like the time where a reporter was just being a bit too pushy and I punched her in the face. Oh. I, I am playing the female version of Commander Shepard. I'm not just a man running around beating on women. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh... I mean... <laughs> it was female on female violence. It's not that my fault. It, the point, it, it, the point is, um, in that game, when you are picking the renegade options, usually you're just kind of being a hard ass mm -hmm. and it actually especially as most of the time i'm aiming to be a paragon a heroic person mm -hmm. who does the good thing a lot of the time every now and again it'll give me a renegade option i'm like yeah let's do that thing and yeah. it just it actually makes the character feel more human mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. instead of it just always being this pure ultra good person they occasionally just have these moments of i am having a bad day and you have to get out of my face now mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. uh and i actually love having those options um and then occasionally you'll be like what what game was it um made by the same people or played very similarly but it was about um thingy pro alpha protocol okay sure um the renegade versus paragon options or equivalent of in that game would just be a dick or be a really 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 big dick um <laughs> and so even when you were being like the super good hero you were basically just running around being an asshole to everyone mm. um it was an odd game that's yeah that's really interesting mm. uh, in the terms of, uh <laughs> niceness narrative in video games yeah because I like, suppose if the character that you're established is supposed to be a difficult person, say so difficult, yeah, just exactly. to be polite, then it would be really out of character. Um, mm -hmm. I guess the just I, I I'm aware that we uh, we're approaching um, like three and a half hours of streaming. I want to wrap up in a little bit, but just one final thought on the kind of morality yeah, of the ahead. games thing. Um, the Shin Megami Tensei games have been quite interesting oh. about that. Not necessarily yes. Persona, but the 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 main line. The SMT, yeah, yeah. Because mm. they have a really uh, 
concurrent theme of order versus chaos in the choices yeah. that you pick. And I am very willing to be nice to people. I refuse to bow down to like authority states in games. That uh -huh. is my that is my thing. Like I will be nice, but I won't be told what to do if I think that the the, the powers that be are actively corrupt and sometimes even if they're written to be genuinely nice because all art is propaganda, the people who write the corporations to be super nice end up not yeah. Uh so I enjoy those abilities to be nice but rebellious. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. I, I definitely. No, I, I think that's one of the reasons I love that series so much. Mm -hmm. Um right there with you. But uh, yeah, to close it out, this question is going to be a little more difficult to answer, but maybe we can kind of collaborately come together to make a sentence for this. And uh, chat, whoever is left still watching, thank you for watching until the end, actually. I appreciate uh, people who've tuned in so far. It makes me warm and fuzzy and want to actually do another one of these. Um, what is cyberpunk to this game? So clearly this game isn't about guns and smoking in the rain, and that's definitely cyberpunk to some people. Uh, but what do you think that what even if it's just like a single word and we kind of have a little word cloud uh, what do you think cyberpunk is to this game I've got an answer but it's not really you know it, it's a short sentence That's um fine. challenge your challenge your idea of personhood mm -hmm. yeah I was gonna say self-discovery I think self-discovery is pro probably a more concise version of that no I like that as a phrase <laughs> I like that as a phrase. The challenge has two L's, darling. Yeah, I know. Because I, I, I think it's it's two, it, it, it's actually two different concepts. Like you're, because yeah, I think more than just Turing mm -hmm. are challenging personhood in many ways. Like the the, the whole human um, whatever guys, mm -hmm. um, and obviously the overlap between that and the real world. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the um, the. The, the genetic splicing to trans metaphor is pretty pretty strong yeah um, maybe on the nose I, I did kind of wonder about it like okay in a game where everybody is already kind of queer in the cyberpunk setting I guess it would probably leave a bad taste in people's mouths if uh, the humanity first person was instead like transphobic that would be yeah. a hard thing to swallow but it's easier mm. if it's distanced in the metaphor of being about being a cat person uh, yeah. So I get why they did it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I think discovery. I think it's not even necessarily self-discovery, but discovery as a whole, mm -hmm. because you're. I feel like everyone that interacts with Turing is learning something, even if they don't realize that they are. Mm -hmm. uh, and obviously, Turing is not only discovering things about themselves, and we're discovering things about Turing, but Turing is also discovering if things happen to Hayden. And, there's a lot of different layers of learning happening pretty constantly. Yeah, I was going to say that my kind of like phrase for this was like, there's value in finding the truth. And I think um, that can tie in and there's a value yeah, in learning yeah, okay. new things. Um, especially because, I mean, the main characters are journalists, so they're, they're prompted mm. to find the truth. But uh, I guess in, in some parts of punk, cyberpunk fiction, there's a lot of kind of like, yeah, there's no truth out there. We're all here to betray me. Uh, um, so that there is a, a direct kind of like, hey, no, this world is hard, but there's uh, truth to be found if you have the nerve to push at it, I think is a valuable idea. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Any others? Um, I think it's probably the music and me. Mm -hmm. Cyberpunk always seems to be something in the future that we can't ever see get to because we don't have floating cars yet and we mm. still don't have the floating hover thing so it seems like as long as the electronic stuff which is slowly becoming real mm -hmm. is there and yeah. I want to do 40s music noir kind of jazz music with futuristic what is it I don't know what the word is I can't think of it right now but it's two things that are so different from each other something so old and something so new yeah, no, that's definitely a part of cyberpunk is of people, you know, think that talk about cyberpunk in the context of um, like circuit board imagery and billboards that have neon lights. Actually, interestingly, this game is very, very light on densely packed buildings with neon lights on them. Actually, there's very few of them in this game. Most of this takes place during the day. Just thinking about that in terms of um, the distinct absence of. Uh neon samurais mm -hmm. and all of the hey 
uh, we're in the future, so everything is Japanese kind of uh, awful shit that cyberpunk has infused itself with over the years. Yeah. And I think that's partly why we see so much less of the uh, neon signs everywhere is because a lot of that comes from that... Um, can't no, think of the word right now. That's true. Like um, the the uh, early cyberpunk being tied with Orientalism, because yeah. in the Orientalism 80s, is the, word I was the uh, boom of technology in the East was a thing that made America go like, Ugh. Um, yeah, because it's that's more so than ever now. It's gotten increasingly like. That's a topic for another day. I can do a stream on that. Um, <laughs> when we, I'm we, not so tired. We're definitely we're definitely going to talk about this more when we kind of go into other games mm -hmm. of the genre. Uh, a large part of like the modern Deus Ex is just, like dicking around in Hong Kong and yeah. the aesthetics that go with that. So we'll definitely explore that later. But yeah, uh, I think the, I think those four bullet points are a good idea to close on. Uh, what is Cyberpunk to um, twenty? There we go. Twenty sixty four read only memories. Well, it's uh, challenge your idea of personhood. There's value in learning and finding the truth. A vibrant and fantastical aesthetic, a bending, a, a bending, a blending of retro and new, and no Orient Orientalism. It can be done. Right. <laughs> yeah. No, that was fantastic. Thank you so much, all of you, for for joining me on this kind of like debut stream adventure, and everybody who's tuned in to watch. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that this has uh, hopefully been recorded by Twitch and the VOD will be available. Mm -hmm. uh, if it hasn't, I might cry for a while and then move on with my life. Uh, but for now, uh, why don't you all go and uh, plug yourselves and what you do. Uh, let's go with Pixie first. Oh, um, I am a freelance 3D artist who also streams on Twitch. I'm a variety streamer. Mm. On occasion, does do a little bit of voice acting thing, so I'm very glad to be able to flex my my voice box here. Your touring is so cute. Oh my god! Oh, thank you. Absolutely thank you. adorable. <laughs> uh, Will. Yeah, I am a real life journalist. That's not as cool as the main character of this game, and a tabletop RPG developer. You can find my work at merrymancergames.com or patreon.com slash williewell. That's UHL, and I'll be slipping a link to my Discord channel in there in just a few moments. Nice. As we have almost 600 members and we run events very frequently. Mm -hmm. And uh, Ray. I'm Ray. I'm Razmataz on the Talent Agency. I am the DM and host for Tales from the Dark Dragon's Inn, which you can learn about on tftddi.co.uk. And I'm also the project lead and one of the performers of Voices at Play, a podcast and non-profit project run by marginalized people to promote fund and raise the profile of marginalized tabletop RPG game, well, tabletop RPG creators. <laughs> um, and yeah, we've so far focused on interstitial. We're currently releasing episodes on a game called Familiars of Terror, which is sort of a Digimon simulator. Uh, it's pretty rad. And coming in the future, we will be releasing episodes, you've heard it here first, of Mutants in the Night. Uh, by DC, and that is such a good game. It's very dark and scary, uh, but it's good, good fun. Hell yeah, uh, I'm all down for Digimon Simulators. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I am your uh, new favorite parasocial relationship. Uh, Nathan Blades, the androgynous Android game show host from the future. Um, you can find me, hopefully on here again at some point in the future, uh, but you can also uh, find me on my podcast called The Talent Agency, available on Podbean and iTunes, Cyberpunk Voking Action, check it out. You can also uh, follow me on Twitter and Instagram at WriterBlades and follow uh, my other kind of creative cyberpunk projects uh, at, at Phantom Arts Ent, that's Phantom Arts E N T on Twitter. And uh, I think this is time to say goodbye. We'll don't see you forget soon. to subscribe or subscribe. follow, whichever. I don't really care if you subscribe or not. No, I'm not give you do. No, no, follow I'm us. not giving Twitch. Follow us. I'm give not us giving attention. Twitch those dollars. Twitch I don't care about them. Support you don't have to Patreon. sub, but do follow. Mm -hmm. Follow mm -hmm. so that you know when we're live next time. True, true that, true that, true that. that right. That's what I meant. I was just misusing the terms because I don't do Twitch either. So. No, no, it's fine. I, I thought you were going to be a capitalist sellout for 30 seconds there. And no, I no, 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 no. I just want attention. 
<laughs> so do I, that's fair. But yes, we'll see you all next time. Bye-bye. Love you and leave you all. Add me on Pokemon Go. My friend code is...